Hello guys, welcome to day 11 and today we are going to start the amazing topic of derivatives or Indian capital market or whatever name it is called by the topic is derivatives. Okay, so a very exciting area derivatives is what I call my ego area derivatives is the chapter where I have staked my ego any student watching my video class or attending my class must walk out with a full confidence that derivatives is simple derivatives I will handle okay you should have that kind of confidence with derivatives okay so derivatives is my ego area it is my responsibility that you are 100% confident in derivatives no questions asked thorough you are in derivatives okay that is my ego i've staked my entire ego on this one chapter derivatives i very often see that students this is a chapter that many students skip okay because they don't understand anything this is one chapter where self-study will help you very little it's very difficult to have self-study this is the chapter that gives you creeps the day for exam okay if you're not strong in this chapter the day before exam you're on a dilemma and i have many students not my students but students uh, who could not attend my classes who try to do self-study uh, or missed this portion of my class called me up the day for exam and asked me uh, Cheta is it okay if I leave this uh, how do I manage derivatives is it okay if I leave derivatives what do I do it gives them the jitters that they are weak in derivatives they kind of feel scared they feel panicked they feel tense if they are not strong in derivatives. That is not going to happen to you. Derivatives is one chapter. You're going to be super strong and 15 marks will be in your pocket. Okay. Derivatives uh, once in five years. Very rarely it happens that derivatives is tested aggressively. Mostly they ask some topic that comes that is there in the practice manual or in the RTP. It is very rare to see the exam take an adventure with derivatives. Okay. And mind you. Uh, derivatives is a huge area professionally okay derivatives is a very vast area if the examiner wants to test you he can test you as much as he wants okay entire treasury is based on derivatives and we at the ca final level are covering this topic at a rudimentary level we're just covering the basics we know the theoretical aspects we are going to touch upon the theoretical aspects of derivatives and try to apply it in very simple and straightforward scenarios okay uh, which is ca final level so understand that derivatives the topic is huge it's too vast there is a lot to cover in derivatives however at the ca final it's a rudimentary discussion okay so welcome to derivatives Now, first thing that I want to clear off the bat, many students have this uh, thought when they study derivatives, they have to start while studying any subject and any chapter for that matter, but it becomes more prominent when you study derivatives, students have the thought, oh my God, why am I going through this? Why am I studying so much? Many students have that thought, okay. Uh, the reason is that derivatives is one area that you may have not encountered at all not even heard of during your articleship or you have not at all touched upon it during your inter okay at best maybe at some professional seminar the first time i heard about derivatives was at a seminar it was raman sir who has in, who introduced it to a sikasa seminar he introduced us to the basics of futures and options and all those things he introduces so that was my first encounter with derivatives so if you have not had the opportunity to attend such seminars or webinars, then derivatives would be a strange thing to you. You have not seen it during your articleship. Even your principal may not be quite aware of what derivative instruments are. That might give you the impression that derivative is something absolutely useless. It is some nuclear physics that chartered accountants generally do not use. First thing, straight out of the bat, I want to take that impression out of you. Maybe right now, it is not being explored as a matter of fact it is creeping into the corporate sector at great speed i had the opportunity of meeting a stock broker who uses derivatives quite frequently and we had a very uh, productive discussion on how derivatives is used practically by stock brokers so it's a very uh, interesting exchange that i had and uh, in my encounter with professionals in the corporate sector what i've come to know is that uh, within the next 
five years, every company will be dependent on derivatives. Every company will be dependent on derivatives. Understand, derivatives should be understood with currency. Should be understood with currency. Almost every corporate would have some forex exposure. Every corporate in India would have some forex. Either there would be foreign investment or you would do a foreign investment or there would be an import or an export or some kind of forex exposure will be there. No matter how small the company is, some kind of forex exposure will always be involved. Even Swastik Academy, we had a brief encounter with Forex where uh, to upload these classes, we had to purchase a server which is based in US. So we had to pay in dollars. So even an in institute, a CA coaching center as small as us had a brief Forex exposure that was diverted anyway. Long story, but every corporate in India would at some point have a Forex exposure. This uh, intro will come once again when we discuss Forex. So the point is every company will have a forex exposure and whenever there is a forex exposure, whenever there is a forex exposure, there is a risk because currency rates, currency rates are very volatile, are very risky, they change very frequently. Every corporate would have some forex exposure that leads to some risk arising out of currency rates and to reduce these risk, you will have to seek the support of derivative instruments. So basically, derivative instruments are certain tools that will help you reduce your risk. Okay, so in this chapter, we'll generally discuss risk in a very general way. In the next chapter, we'll discuss forex at length, and we'll also discuss about the risk arising from forex. And over there again, we'll discuss derivatives in the currency market. Okay, so derivatives is a prelude to forex. Okay, so understand. Derivatives are tools that help you reduce risk. Okay, derivatives are tools that help you reduce risk. Corporate India is learning about risk in a very detailed way. Chartered accountants are learning about risk and we are all discussing about how to reduce risk. I have had one of my uh, lecturers tell me that one of the reasons that Forex is coming is very slow in India. That sorry, foreign investments are slow in India is because India does not offer very good derivative products, whereas uh, countries like Singapore or Dubai offer very good derivative products, offer good opportunities for foreign investors to hedge their risk, to reduce their risk. India has not developed in the derivative market, and that is one of the reasons we are quite repugnant to some foreign investors. So, five to ten years down the line, major reforms are underway the government still a lot of indians look at derivatives as gambling okay so that is slowly changing government will push through reforms rbi will push through reforms and very soon five to ten years down the line we will be dealing with derivatives at a great length in the peak of your career when you're just appointed as cfo as a, of the company you're working or once you get to the post of finance manager your company will be dealing very aggressively in derivative products okay be it in finance, you could have a career in finance, in tax, in audit, whatever it is, you will need a thorough understanding of derivative and derivative products to work as a chartered accountant. So I want to convince you, please understand that a thorough understanding of derivatives is quintessential for your career as a chartered accountant. This is not some accounting standard that is no way going to affect you. 99% of your career unless you decide to teach even taxation even tax faculties need a thorough understanding of derivatives because there are several sections that deal with derivatives okay so even in teaching no matter what your career is you will need an understanding you will need a basic understanding of derivatives that will be imparted to you at the ca final level okay so i want you to understand very thoroughly that this is a very professional very important area and this is not something i am telling to you because i am an sf faculty this is coming very genuinely derivatives and it okay information technology eis that you have learnt in inter these are two very key areas the most important area as a chartered accountant let me clear that off okay if you're doubting whether i am trying to market my own subject let me clear that up the most important area for you old syllabus will be iska paper new syllabus inter eis paper that is the most important area for you uh, especially given the current situation given the lockdown and even before the lockdown i know a lot of ca firms 
a lot of old traditional CA firms, I talked to the chartered accountants, the newly appointed chartered accountants, the newly appointed partners have taken up automation to such a great scale. And now with pandemic coming on along with a lot of work at home being promoted, automation is a very important area. So EIS, IT, not income tax, information technology is going to be the most important subject to you as a professional. Okay, derivatives will definitely mark their up the ranks. Okay, after income tax and information technology, income tax is taken for granted. I do not market income tax and GST to you. But the underrated topics, the most underrated is what you learned in inter ITSM. Very, very important subject as a professional. As a professional, I can tell you that is the most important, that is the most lucrative subject, by the way. Having a thorough grasp, doing a DISA, DISA is very important. You need DISA to get bank audits. Uh, DISA has an entire professional world open to you that many of you may not be aware of. Okay. So IT sector is a beautiful booming sector for chartered accountants. Even chartered accountants in audit, in practice will need a very thorough understanding. We need a thorough understanding of IT information technology at a very practical level and all the concepts, you know, system development and backup and system security and IT law, all these very important knowledge for a charter account. Most important IT. Again, ranking with IT as an underrated chapter is derivative. It's a very important topic to you practically. Okay. So, shall we discuss our uh, chapter? Shall we begin our discussion? All right. So, we are going to start with derivatives. We are discussing four derivative instruments. We are discussing four derivative instruments. They are futures. options, swaps and FRA, forward rate agreement. So, these are four derivative tools, derivative instruments that we are going to discuss in this chapter. We will start off with futures, which is the only confusing area, which is the most important area. Most of the, most of the times exam asks the question, it's either, either going to be from futures or options. Uh, swap is very rare, although CMA textbook has devoted a lot of time for swap. Swap is relatively rare. FR is also relatively rare, but important. I have seen that the new updates to the practice manual to the study material come from FRA. In uh, new syllabus study material, they have devoted an entire chapter called interest rate, uh, interest rate derivatives, interest rate hedging, interest rate derivatives, a new chapter entirely, which is based on FRA. Okay, so in the new textbooks. I am hoping in the upcoming exam, you will have a lot of discussion on FRA. In the past exams, okay, that's how we discuss the expected, no, based on past trends. Past trends is mostly devoted to futures and options. Futures is the relatively difficult area, which is a relatively difficult, relatively strange area. And that is the area where a lot of time will be needed for you to understand. Okay, you will need a lot of time to understand what is futures. So what we're going to do is we'll start off with futures. Okay, I'll explain the concept. We'll have a long discussion. We'll also discuss some theory. We'll also discuss some theory under futures. We'll have a long discussion and do three problems in futures. Okay, so with that, we'll temporarily pause futures. Then we'll go to options, which is the easiest area in the syllabus, not just in this chapter. In the entire SFM syllabus or entire CA final syllabus, options is the easiest area. Very easy, fun area, options. Okay, we'll do options. We'll do swap. Now, options and swap, I look at the time. I might do swap and then options or options and then swap. We'll look at it. Okay, swap is a very small area, just two questions. So, swap and FRA are mid-level. Okay, they are difficult, but if you understand the concept, they become easy. Okay, if you understand the concept, so we'll spend a lot of time with swap, we'll, uh, sorry, with FRA, we'll spend a lot of time discussing the concept. If you understand the concept, it's a very simple area. It's a very simple area. After FRA, once again, we'll come to futures. After FRA, once again, we'll come to futures. We'll have a discussion on futures. So, that will be our second round of discussion. So, by then, you will be quite convinced, quite thorough with futures. Then, we'll finish off derivatives. We'll go into Forex. And in Forex, once again, we will discuss currency futures. And at that point, by the time we reach currency futures is when you're going to get a thorough clarity on what futures deals with. Okay. So, in my first discussion, there's going to be a lot of smoke uh, in your mind regarding what is going on. Okay. You won't get the 
clarity you won't get that base will not be strong in my first discussion okay so be very patient with futures we will need three rounds of discussion of futures to you know that base to settle in so right now i'm just giving that base it is like wet cement it will take time for the cement to settle and once it settles, it will settle beautifully okay it will settle when we discuss current settings okay so i want a patience with you when we are discussing futures if you have lasted so far in the lecture okay you have to you had to endure a lot of patience in portfolio okay i'm sure you had to endure a lot of patience in portfolio especially if you are listening to sfm for the first time i'm sure you had to endure a lot of patience for portfolio uh, because it takes time it takes the entire chapter three days of lectures it takes for you to get quite convinced on uh, portfolio okay if you have endured portfolio you will endure futures because now we have a very good rapport now you know my style you know my approach now we'll have a very good rapport okay so the way i taught portfolio was indeed a prelude to futures so that you don't get shocked and repelled and repulsed when we learn futures okay so on that long note shall we begin futures I'm very excited. I'm super excited. Okay, futures is the area to study. Okay, so let us start with the futures. Some batches I spend the entire night before class thinking about how the lecture is going to be, how I'm going to start, how I'm going to teach, how what all doubts will come. I spend the entire night thinking and planning on how futures lecture is going to be. It's a very exciting area for me, and I hope it is the same for you too. Okay, futures. Shall we begin? Okay. What is futures? Okay, understand. Let us understand very elementary. Futures is an asset. A wrong and a very crude definition of futures. Okay, futures is an asset. But I want you to visualize futures as a product like this pen. Okay, I want you to visualize futures like you have visualized a share. Okay, or a debenture or this pen right over here. It's a product. Okay, like a part of your inventory. it is a product it is an asset okay point number 1 point number 1 let us visualize that a wrong definition but let us visualize it that way futures is an asset okay now let me rectify it a little better it's not exactly an asset it's a financial instrument that would be a more correct term it's a financial instrument now what is a financial instrument a financial instrument is a tool that is an asset for one person and liability for another liability what is the spelling of liability liability okay so a financial instrument is something that is an asset in one person's hand and liability in another think of a debenture to the person who has holding a debenture who has purchased a debenture it is an asset to the person who has issued the debenture it comes to the liability side of the balance sheet it is a liability to the issuer to the buyer it's an asset to the seller it's a liability okay so futures is just like that it is an asset for the buyer for the seller it's a liability okay for visualizing let us call it call it an asset okay now second what is the nature of this asset what is the nature of asset what is the nature of asset it is basically a contract it is basically a contract what the hell is wrong with my spelling contract to buy another asset it's a contract to buy another asset what is the, what is the nature of a debenture debenture is a part of loan that pays a fixed interest on a monthly or a quarterly or a half yearly or annual basis okay what is an equity share what is the nature of an equity share equity share is a part of your capital it's a piece of your capital what is the nature of futures what is the we have discussed that futures is an asset okay what is the asset okay it is a contract to buy another asset it's a contract to buy another asset which is called the underlying asset which is called the underlying asset so futures itself is an asset it's a product it's a tradable product what is the nature of this product this fellow is a 
contract to buy or sell another asset which is called the underlying asset so futures is a contract that allows you to buy an underlying asset for example you have december in fee futures december in fee futures is a contract to buy a share of infosys in december december in fee futures is a contract that allows you to buy a share of infosys in december let's say september nifty futures what is nifty nifty is market basically nifty represents the market so september nifty futures is a few is a contract to buy a piece of market infosys means you're not buying the entire company you're buying a piece a share of infosys similarly a share of the market that is possible okay you can buy one piece of the market as a whole it is possible okay you can buy one piece of the market so nifty futures is a contract to buy nifty in september okay so understand futures an asset what is the nature of asset it's a contract to buy another asset now there are two types of contracts now we are discussing what is a contract there are two types of contracts to buy asset there are two types of contracts there is one in cash settlement or physical delivery contract on delivery basis contract on delivery basis or there is contract on non delivery basis or net basis delivery basis is also called physical settlement non delivery is also called cash settlement so these are the words uh, one of the rtp questions was explain contracts on delivery basis and non delivery basis okay that's a theory question now we are discussing two types of contracts there are contracts on delivery basis there are contracts on non delivery basis okay so this is my asset this water bottle is my asset okay i am entering into a contract to purchase 500 water bottles or imagine this water bottle is made of gold okay so i am entering into a contract to purchase 500 tons i'm a very rich fellow 500 tons of gold my daughter is getting married and not kilos 500 tons of gold okay a very wrong thing to do please okay don't get the idea i'm not normalizing the idea it's a setup okay so i am a stupid fellow who is spending 500 tons of gold on his daughter's wedding okay so uh, my daughter's wedding is on december okay it's on 31st december i don't know what the price of gold will be on 31st december okay so right now today i am entering into a contract i am entering into a contract to buy 500 tons of gold on 31st december okay there are two types of contract contract on delivery basis contract on non delivery basis if i enter into a contract on physical delivery okay on a delivery basis i enter into a contract on 31st december the seller will come to my house unload 500 tons of gold and take cash from me okay so on 31st december i will receive at my house at my place of business i will receive 500 tons of gold and on 31st december i have to pay i have to pay what was the agreed upon price okay today i am entering into this contract i will agree upon a price say uh, rupees i think 30000 per sovereign or uh, 3000 or 4500 per gram that is a rate so at that rate i will pay on 31st december and he will give me 500 tons of gold this is a contract on delivery basis then there is a contract on non delivery basis or cash settlement understand today i have entered what is the date today today as the recording is going on this is 15th june today is 15th june and today i have entered into contract to purchase 500 tons of gold 500 tons of gold on 31st december 6 and a half months later on 31st december at 3500 rupees per gram rupees 3500 per gram that is a contract i have entered into physical delivery what happens 
on 31st December, the seller comes to my house, gives me 500 tons. Keep it. Keep it. He gives me 500 tons of gold and I have to pay him the amount at 3,500 per gram contract on delivery basis. On non-delivery basis, what happens? On 31st December, I am waiting. I have computed 5,000 5, tons into 1,000 kilo plus uh, per ton into 1,000 gram per kilo into 3,500. I have taken the money, hard cash. Okay, hard cash. I have kept that much money ready and I am waiting outside my house. Where is the gold? Where is the gold? Where is the gold? Gold is not coming. I call the seller. Hey, seller, you said you will give me gold, 500 tons of gold. My daughter is about to get married. I need the gold to pour on top of my daughter. Okay, because I am a crazy person. So, I need that. 500 tons of gold. Where is the gold? The seller says, sorry sir, this is a contract on non-delivery base. I am not going to give you gold. What? You are not, what contract is this then? You are not going to give me gold. Sir, sir, please don't get angry. Don't get angry. Pay attention. Listen, I will not give you gold. Okay. Why? Technical reasons. I am in Saudi Arabia. Okay. From Saudi Arabia, I have to come all the way to India to send the gold. Uh, uh, shipping charges, then there is insurance, all those charges and then it takes time also. If I start now, it will take one month from Saudi Arabia to reach India. So much gold. It is inconvenient. Are, are, then you should have told me at that time itself. No, sir, I told you at that time it's not delivery. Anyway, you don't know what is the meaning of non-delivery. So, I will teach you now. I will teach you now. Sir, understand, contract on non-delivery basis means today, I will not give you gold. Then what will you give me? I will give you the value of gold. I will give you the value of gold. Today, gold is trading at rupees 4000 per gram. I think it's already 4000 per gram. Anyway, example. Okay. Today, gold is trading at rupees 4000 per gram. Okay. Physical delivery, what happened? He actually gave you the gold. In this case, he will not give you the gold. Instead, he will give you 4000 rupees. He will give you 4,000 rupees and he will collect 3,500 rupees from you. Okay, what is happening? He will give you 4,000 rupees and he is collecting 3,500 rupees from you. In physical delivery, he will give you gold and collect 3,500 rupees. In cash delivery, he will not give you gold. He will give you the value of gold which is 4,000 rupees and he will collect 3,500 rupees from you. Arayar, what do I do with this money 4,000 rupees? Sir, you can go to your nearest jewelry shore and buy this gold. Okay. So, that transportation, is, that's a very crude example. But anyway, understand, instead of actually delivering gold, instead of actually delivering gold, I am delivering to you the value of gold. I am delivering to you the value of gold. This is a contract on non-delivery basis. This is a contract on non-delivery basis or contract on cash settlement. In physical settlement, actual asset the underlying asset. What have we discussed? The underlying asset. Futures a contract. Futures a contract to buy an underlying asset. In delivery basis, the underlying asset will come to your house. Okay. In cash basis, the underlying asset will not come. Instead, the seller will sell you, send you the value of the underlying asset. The value of the underlying asset. Now, understand the benefit. Uh, for a for if it's for marriage, if it's if you genuinely need the product, if you genuinely need gold or crude oil, you are a petroleum company, you need crude oil. In that case, this may not be much of a benefit. Okay, this uh, delivery basis or non-delivery basis, delivery non-delivery may not be much of a benefit. But if you are only a trader in crude oil, if you are only a trader in crude oil, what are you planning to do? You are planning to buy crude oil at three thousand five hundred and sell it at four thousand. Okay, so you have to then receive uh, crude oil, then you have to store crude oil, find a seller, then you have to sell it at 4000. Instead of that, he is directly giving you 4000, job is easier. Okay, so if you are a trader, if your intention is to sell the underlying asset, if your intention is to sell the underlying asset, why should the asset come to your house? This deal is easier. Okay, if your intention was not to get your daughter married, but instead resale this gold, then your job is, is you don't have to go find a seller. The seller itself is giving you the value. Okay, so the sale has happened. Net basis, you are nicking a profit of 500 rupees. You are automatically nicking a profit of 500 rupees. Okay, what happens on non-delivery? Delivery basis, you are getting the gold, you have to pay 3,500. 
if you actually going to use the gold that is fine okay for your daughter's wedding or for whatever crazy reason you are going to use the gold and that is fine but if you are a jeweler if you are a trader okay you are buying the gold and then you are reselling it then non delivery based works for you okay what happens on the due date he will not send me the gold instead he'll send me the value of gold okay i have to pay him 3500 he'll pay me 4000 net base i'm getting a 500 rupee profit that is a contract on non delivery basis understood now futures i told you futures i told you is a contract what kind of contract is it it is a contract on non deliverable basis it's a contract on non deliverable basis it's a contract on non deliverable basis although recently in the last year 2019 sebi has updated its rule saying futures 25 percent of the futures have to be on deliverable basis we'll deliberate on that later okay for now understand this way futures are a contract on non deliverable basis point number one point number two there are two types of contracts there are two types of contracts so this is important for theory also okay so first you have discussed two types of contracts which are on deliverable basis and non deliverable basis non deliverable basis physical settlement happens on the due date you actually get the asset and you have to pay cash cash settlement you get the value of the asset and you have to pay cash or rather the net settlement happens in this case you get instead of actual gold you get 4000 rupees per gram you have to pay 3000 rupees per gram net basis you will get 500 rupees per gram one doubt might that might come to you is what is the benefit for the seller okay there is a possibility that gold price instead of 4000 could become 3000 okay so on the due date he will give you 3000 rupees and you have to give him 500 rupees which means he is making a profit of 500 that is also possible okay so that is a benefit for the seller understand now there are two types of contracts okay so one is delivery non delivery understood Paka. now there are another classification one is called over the counter and the other is called exchange traded one is called over the counter the other is called exchange traded okay now uh, this is the asset okay this is the asset i'm going to buy this asset i'm going to buy or sell this asset okay so what can happen i go to a store okay or you're going to buy gold you can buy it to a, go to malabar jewelers or joy alkas or whoever is a uh, vendor you can buy to the seller sit across the table like this over the counter you can sit with him and negotiate uh, bro i need uh, 500 tons of gold what is the rate you are saying he will sir my rate is 3500 and then you will say no no i want 3300 no 3200 3100 whatever you will negotiate and finally you will fix at a price say 3350 you will sit across the counter and you will negotiate and fix it okay that is an over the counter transaction understood that is a over the counter transaction sitting across a counter and you're negotiating and discussing and what happens on the due date on 31st december you will again come to whom the person you have entered with okay whoever you have entered with my pen oh, sometimes it doesn't work whoever you have entered the contract you'll go him go to him meet him on 31st december and settle the contract physical settlement or cash settlement okay so you'll go to him and settle him that is an over the counter contract you know the face of the seller or if you are a seller you know the face of the buyer that is an over the counter contract the other is a exchange traded contract okay in exchange traded you are a buyer and there is a seller you people don't meet the meeting does not happen instead instead of that there is a fellow in between called the exchange there is a fellow in between called the exchange so you and the seller the buyer and the seller don't meet instead these fellows only interact with this exchange okay so the buyer asks the exchange mr exchange i want to buy the seller immediately start looking okay okay, okay. is there ah, i stopped you the seller will find a seller or rather the seller generally what happens the seller is already ready the seller would have already asked mr exchange i want to sell what do you want to sell 
500 tons. What do you want to buy? 500 tons. The exchange will get them to meet. The exchange will get them to meet. Understand? Over the counter means buyer and seller meet between themselves, interact, shake hands, sign the agreement and the contract is over. In an exchange traded contract, you don't, the buyer doesn't enter into a contract with the seller. This doesn't happen. Instead, the buyer enters into a contract with the exchange. The seller also enters into a contract with the exchange. The exchange acts as an intermediary for this contract. Understood? Now understand the beauty. Okay? Buyer. What do you want to buy? 500 tons of gold. On 31st December. On 31st December, you want to buy 500 tons of gold. Seller wants to sell. Not necessarily 500. There is one seller who wants to sell 200, another seller 100, another seller 150, another seller 50. There may be four sellers. You don't even know. You don't even know. So you are requesting the exchange. Exchange, exchange. I want a I want to enter into a contract that whereby I buy 500 tons of gold on 31st December. At the same time, another seller enters into a contract with the exchange saying, sellers, uh, ex exchange, exchange, I want to sell 500 tons of gold on 31st December. These two shake hands. Okay, not with each other, with the exchange. The exchange plays as a party. Now, understand the beauty. What happens is, on, on say, 1st October, the buyer feels, the buyer feels, I want to cancel this contract. I want to cancel this contract. The buyer asks the exchange, a hey, exchange, I earlier entered into a contract with you, no? I earlier entered into a contract. I want to cancel that. Okay. The exchange tells, dude, even I don't know who the seller is. No cancellation is possible. If you want to do one thing, you have made a purchase over here. You have entered a contract to buy, enter into a contract to sell, become a seller. Okay. Sell 500 tons of gold. Okay. So at any point, the settlement can happen. The settlement happens with the exchange. You purchase today on 15th June. On 15th June. Understand? Pay very close attention. On 15th June, you entered into a contract to purchase 500 tons of gold. On 31st December. Okay. On cash settlement, that is non delivery basis. Non delivery basis. Okay. On 31st December, what happened? Do you get the gold? No. You will get only the value of gold. Okay. Or in other words, or in other words, now pay attention to the terminology. Pay attention to the terminology. Original terminology. On 15th June, you have entered a contract to buy 500 tons of gold. Okay, that is the original terminology. You have entered into a contract to buy 500 tons of gold. And on 31st December, you will get value of gold. This is the original terminology. Now understand the futures terminology. Understand the futures terminology. Entered contract to buy. Entered contract to buy becomes, instead of saying entered a contract to buy gold, you can simply say you have bought futures. You can simply say you have bought futures instead of complicating it and saying you have entered into a contract to buy gold. Okay, you have bought a future. You have bought a future. What is a future? It's an asset. What does the asset do? It is a contract to buy gold. Okay, so understand buying futures means entering into a contract to buy gold. Selling futures means entering into a contract to sell gold. Okay, so you have bought a future another person you are a buyer 
you have bought a future which means you have entered into contract to buy gold another person is a seller he has sold a contract he has sold a future which means he has entered into a contract to sell gold buyer and seller meet through the exchange understand okay on 15th june you have bought december gold futures you have bought what futures futures by itself are a naked word okay i have to explain december gold futures okay you have bought december gold futures 500 tons of december gold futures on 15th june you have bought on 31st june what happens you are getting the value of gold you are getting the value of gold or in other words you can say you are selling the futures okay look at this example look at this example once again today you enter into a contract to buy gold at 3500 per gram today you can say you have buy futures you have bought futures on 31st december you are getting this 3000 per gram or 4000 per gram what are the values on that date on this day you can see you have sold this future and you are getting the value okay so what happens on 15th June, you are entering into a contract to buy gold on 31st December. Are you getting the gold? No, you are getting the value of gold. How are you getting the value of gold? You are selling a futures. You had a futures on 15th June, you bought a futures. That futures you will sell on 31st December. And you will get the value of futures on that date. What does a seller do? What does a seller do on 15th June? On 15th June, he is entering into a contract to sell gold or rather he is selling futures on 31st December he will buy futures and they will cancel out each other understand the beauty of exchange traded you need not sell it only on 31st December on 30th September on 30th September just a sec on 30th September on 30th September, you feel, I don't want those futures. You can sell it. You can sell the futures on 30th September. You need not wait till 31st December. You can sell it on 30th September itself. You need not wait till 31st December. You can sell it on 30th September. And you can get the value on that date. You can get the value on 30th September. Okay. Today, you bought futures. The rate was rupees 3,500 per gram. Now, on 30th September, you find out that the rate, this contract, see, originally this contract was for 3,500. On 30th September, the same contract, what is the contract? To buy gold on 31st December, to buy 500 tons of gold on 31st December. That same contract has a value of 4,000. There is a buyer out there asking, hey, I want 500 tons of gold on 31st December and I am ready to pay 4,000. You entered into a contract. Now, instead of entering into a contract, I'm going to use buy futures. Okay, you entered into a contract. You bought futures when the rate was 3,500. The rate of the future. The rate at which you agreed to buy gold. The rate of the future was 3,500. On 30th September, the rate of futures was 4,000. You can sell it on this day itself. Okay. Or you can wait till 31st December. On 31st December, that is the expiry date. Okay. The price of gold which is the price of futures okay on the expiry date the price of gold itself is the price of futures the price of gold or the price of futures is 5000 you can wait till 31st December and sell it for 5000 nick a profit of 1500 rupees okay finally okay so we have understood two types of contracts what are the two types of contracts deliverable and non-deliverable again two types of contracts what are they they are over the counter where you are meeting with the person when it's an over the counter such flexibility is not allowed you cannot say hey uh, on 30th september i want to sell again on 1st october i want to buy 5th october again i want to sell 4th october i want to buy none of that is possible today i will sell tomorrow i will buy day after tomorrow i'll buy and sell none of that flexibility is possible in a over the counter contract exchange traded is super flexible okay so, futures is a exchange traded non-deliverable contract. Okay. We said it's a contract to buy an asset. What kind of contract? It is an exchange traded non-deliverable contract to buy an asset. Okay. So, point number one, you can write down now, point number one, 
we discuss futures as an asset point number 2 we discuss futures as a contract to buy an asset what kind of contract futures the non deliverable exchange traded contract to buy an asset exchange traded it is exchange no doubt about it non deliverable there are recent updates there are deliverable futures also there are deliverable futures also we will leave that you can check out the newspaper do research of your own there are deliverable futures also in india recently allowed outside it's already there okay so in a for our discussion futures is a non deliverable exchange traded contract to buy or sell you can be the buyer or the seller okay so that is point number 2 also please note down the theory points there are two types of contracts deliverable non deliverable what are they you know again two types of contracts over the counter exchange traded over the counter buyer and seller meet each other they meet each other face to face or online or what are they know each other they know the identity of the buyer and seller is known to each other exchange traded the trading happens through a exchange the buyer and seller do not meet trading happens through an exchange okay so futures is a non deliverable exchange traded contract last point point number 3 what is the price of futures okay here i entered into a contract to buy gold on 31st december at 3500 understand the original word i have entered into a contract to buy gold on 31st december at the rate of 3500 this has now been shrunk to you bought a future at 3500 now think of it only in that terms okay you bought a future at 3500 how is this price fixed this price of 3500 how is it fixed okay what is the price of futures what is the price of futures now let us understand the difference between an asset and a contract difference between an asset and a contract what is the difference between an asset and a contract a building okay this is the building you have two choices you can either buy this building or you can enter into a contract to buy this building after one year one year contract okay you are buying this building today the rate is 1 crore today the rate is 1 crore or you are entering into a contract to buy this building after one year what is the rate okay you are entering into a contract to buy this building after one year what is the price quoted on that contract or rather what is the price of that contract those mean the same okay enter into a contract to buy this building after one year at rupees 1.5 crore you can instead say buy this contract at 1.5 crore that is the terminology understood that okay we'll keep repeating that okay now buy this contract at 1.5 crore how do you decide the price okay or rather what is the difference between the actual building and the contract to buy this building what is the difference between an actual building and a contract to buy this building now if you bought the building today you have to pay today itself you have to pay today if you buy a contract if you are buying a future if you are buying a contract if you are buying a future do you have to pay today no future is only a contract you have to pay only after one year pay on due date so asset means you have to pay today contract means you have to pay on due date now what happens now ca students now very well know what happens what is the difference between paying today and paying after one year suppose the due date is after one year what is the difference between paying today and paying after one year there is a time value of money difference if you are buying an asset you have to pay today okay or in installments you have to take a loan and pay today okay and the loan has to be repaid in installments that's a different story interest will come over there ignore that okay you have to pay today contract means you have to pay after one year okay so you are getting the same asset in both cases you are getting a building only if you buy the actual building or if you buy a contract to buy the building you are getting the building the benefit is the building only okay but the difference is asset means you have to pay today contract means you can pay after one year so when you enter into a contract there is an interest cost okay same building worth 1 crore 
here you have to pay 1 crore but here you have to pay 1 crore only after 1 year which means there is a time value of money difference this 1 crore you could have invested in some bank you could have invested in some bank and earned an interest and you can pay after 1 year okay so paying 1 year paying 1 crore after 1 year is profitable to you you have that interest benefit okay you invested 1 crore for 1 year in a bank and earn interest okay so, and you know very well that price equals benefit you know that price equals benefit so the price of a future price of a contract or price of a future equals what is the benefit of buying a future you get an asset at a spot price spot price means price is the asset today into you are paying only after one year you are paying only after one year you are buying a building building's price is one crore you are paying only after one year so for that one year you can invest this amount at the risk free rate which is 10 percent and buy the building after one year okay so when you're buying after one year this 10 percent is a benefit to you 10 percent is a benefit to you price is equal to benefit so the price of a future is you can say in words let's write in words press first spot price meaning price of the asset today spot price plus interest spot price plus interest okay for that period now if you bought the actual building there is another side to the story if you have the actual building okay you can give it on a rent if you buy a contract can you leave the contract on rent not possible but if you have the building with you the building can be let out on rent you are earning a rent also that is a neg that is a loss to you a negative benefit to you that should be reduced less convenience yield or if we talk in terms of shares it is dividend less dividend okay so price of a future equals spot price what is spot price market price of the underlying asset today market price of the underlying asset today the asset and contract are exactly the same but with the contract you get the asset spot price of the asset plus you have the benefit of time value of money you have to pay only after one year you don't have to pay today you can have you to pay only after one year you are saving one year interest or in case you are paying after one month you are saving that one month interest that interest the benefit to you that will be part of the price of the contract minus it is expected that during the year this share will give a dividend of say five percent dividend yield dividend yield is say five percent okay that has to be reduced that has to be reduced okay so price of future equals spot price plus interest minus dividend yield or you can say in simpler terms fair future price fair future price equals spot price instead of adding interest we normally do this into 1 plus r raised to what is the periodicity okay 10 percent means into 1.1 we normally do it okay 12 percent meaning 100 into 1.12 you can again say 12 percent pay it now pay it 12 percent compounded monthly compounded monthly what do you mean compounded monthly please refer to question number four of bond valuation please refer to question number four of bond valuation you have discussed this compounded monthly okay bond valuation question number four quickly take it out look at the page quickly check it out 12 percent compound monthly becomes one percentage per month one percentage per month so it becomes 1.01 raised to 12 we have had this long discussion in mlp limited question number four of bond valuation i'm not going to repeat that now okay so whatever is the rate 12 percent per annum or one percent per month okay spot price into rate raised to n okay so you can say ffp equals s into one plus r raised to n where s is the spot price r is the risk free rate why do we take risk-free rate 
please wait a little more during options i'll tell you when we discuss options i will tell you why we are taking risk free rate okay we are taking risk please keep that in mind that doubt is there with you keep it in mind during options i will discuss why is it risk free rate minus dividend yield minus dividend yield okay n is the period if there is only one period raised to one if there are six periods raised to six if there is no period today okay so final concept fair future price fair future price equals s into 1 plus r raised to n where s is a spot price r is a risk free rate minus dividend yield if any n is a period last concept very important concept concept number four concept number four on the due date Where is that discussion? Um, okay, I think this is it. On the due date, on 31st December, on 31st December. Okay, you originally bought futures on the due date, you are selling futures. Okay, or in other words, you entered a contract to buy on the due date, you are getting the value of gold. Okay, so when you sell futures, you should get the value of gold on 31st December. What is the value of gold on 31st December? That amount you should get. Or in other words, the price of future should be equal to the price of gold on the due date. Now look at the formula. On the due date, on the due date, okay, the remaining life, we discussed over here, N stands for period, okay. On the due date, the remaining period, N equals 0. Any number raised to 0 equals 1, okay. So this whole term becomes equal to 1 or on the due date if you did not understand this mathematics please understand this much on the due date price of futures on the due date price of futures equals price of asset on the due date price of futures equals price of asset understood okay so first revise the entire concept first we said futures is an asset okay then we correct as a financial instrument okay then we explain in detail what is the nature of this asset it is a contract futures itself is an asset guys understand so normally instead of saying i have entered into a contract to buy gold on 31st december i am simply saying i bought futures because point number one futures itself is an asset the contract itself is an asset so instead of saying i have entered into a contract to buy gold you can just say i have bought this asset this contract means I am going to buy gold on 31st December. Okay, so point number one, futures an asset. Point number two, what is the nature of the asset? It is a non-deliverable exchange traded contract to trade or to buy or sell on an underlying asset. Okay, point number three, what is the price of that contract? What is the price of futures? Fair future price. The actual price might vary. We will discuss that when you come to the problem. The fair future price, FFP equals spot price. The price of the underlying asset today, the market price of the underlying asset today into 1 plus R raised to N. Fair future price equals S into 1 plus R raised to N. On the due date, N becomes 0. The remaining period becomes 0. Okay. On the due date, if you don't understand the mathematics, leave it. On the due date, price of asset, price of futures is equal to the spot price of the underlying asset understood understood there is one more formula ffp equals s into e raised to rt okay uh, cma final students should only use this e power rt okay however for this class for the sake of this class just go on, just use 1 plus R raised to N for now. What is E power RT? I will explain towards the end of future. Okay? I will promise I will explain what is E power RT, how to find out E power RT, everything I will explain. CMA final students must always solve their problems using E power RT. However, if you are using this class right now, please follow my method right now. Towards the end of the chapter, I will explain what is E power RT and how to use E power RT in detail. Okay, CMA material, all the questions are answered using E power RT. Okay, so the other faculties there, remember SS Rajagopal sir only uses E power RT. He doesn't use 1 plus R power N, he only uses E power RT. 
for CA, how e power RT works, I'll explain. Okay, please bear with me. I think I don't want to overload you too much. I think you already have too much load. Okay, so let us quickly discuss one story. Okay, you have an asset called December in fee futures. December in fee futures. What is that? It is a contract, it is a non deliverable exchange traded contract to buy a share of Infos on December. Okay, that is December in fee futures. Now, Infos is, has a share price of 1000. Has a share price of 1000. Risk free rate is 10%. Let us say, okay, risk free rate is 10%. Okay, and assume December is one year from now. For the sake of example, today is 1st January. Today is 1st January. Okay. Share of Infosys has a cost of rupees 1000. Okay. So 1000 into 1 plus R into 1.1. Futures should have a fair price of 1100. Futures should have a fair price of 1100. You bought a December in fee futures at rupees 1100. On 31st December, understand what happens on 31st December, on 31st December, Infosys price in fee, spot price of Infosys becomes 2000. We have discussed on the, the due date is December, on the due date, the futures price should also be equal to spot price which is 2000. Okay, so what happens? Today you bought a future on the due date, you have to sell the future. You cannot say, no, my asset, I will not give it to anybody. That will not work. On the due date, you have to sell it. Or in the original words, in terms of contract, you are getting the value for futures on due date. No, it's a cash settlement. It's a non-deliverable contract. On the due date, nobody is going to give you a share. Nobody is going to give you a share of Infosys. Instead, on the due date, you will get the value of the share. Or in technical terms, you will sell the future you will sell the future on the due date and you will on due date what happens this 1100 would have to be paid okay understand you are buying today but payment is not happening today because it's only a contract futures is a mix between an actual asset and a contract actual asset means you would have to pay today futures only a contract so you don't have to pay today when you're buying futures understand that when you're buying futures you don't have to pay although i use the term very liberally buying futures you don't have to pay today on the due date, you have to sell futures. When you sell futures, on that date, you have to pay 1100 and you will receive 2000 net receipts. Net receipt will be rupees 900. Net receipt will be rupees 900. Understood? Pakka? Got it? Sure? All right. So on that note, let us try out one problem. Let us try out one question based on futures. Let us try out one question based on futures. Please take out your question bank. Come to derivatives chapter and open question number one. Okay. So I think we have had too much of concepts okay we've had a long story of what is futures we will do one question just try to touch futures okay in question number one you just try to touch futures we will just do this question we'll do question number one we'll just try and touch futures and then we will explain some more concepts okay what is the use of futures we'll explain after that okay shall we do question number one okay you don't have to do it i will do it for you i will do question number one for you okay shall we do question number one Beautiful question. Just pay very close. Just pay very close attention. We are going to actually apply futures. We are going to work out a plot of futures. Okay. Hello. Question number one. The share of X Limited, the share is selling for 300. Is selling means not just sale. Okay. It's trading for the market price is 300. Okay. Some students have noticed get confused the word selling for. Okay. So selling for us. So you cannot buy a. Some students ask that out. Literally, they have asked that out. Okay, so happens. Okay, I don't make fun of doubts. 
okay every doubt is a legitimate doubt only selling for 300 doesn't mean it's only selling for it's being traded for 300 the market price is 300 the risk free interest rate is 0.8 percent per month it is 0.8 percent per month means it is compounded monthly i want you to quickly revise i hope you have revised what is that per month i hope you know it if you don't know it please pay attention to the answer okay and after this answer is completed when i give you a break you can go to bond valuation check out that video check out the video of bond valuation where we have done mlp okay we have had a long discussion on what is compounded monthly now the risk free interest rate is 0.8 percent per month okay it's not a big concept it is a simple concept i hope you know it a three months future contract okay so contract expiring after three months is selling for 312 future price is 312 the price of futures is 312 develop an arbitrage strategy develop an arbitrage strategy what do you, do you mean by the word arbitrage please go to the formula page and write down what does the word arbitrage mean arbitrage means it is a i have to write everything only then i get that satisfaction of explaining okay it is a strategy through which you make a risk free profit meaning a guaranteed not that okay if this happens i'll get so much profit if this happens i'll get so much profit pakka guaranteed profit guarantee that you will get this much profit arbitrage strategy is a strategy whereby you get a risk free profit it's a strategy whereby you get a risk free profit by exploiting a mistake in the market a mistake in the market it is a risk free profit you can make by exploiting a mistake in the market for example okay oil crude oil petrol or let's say petrol petrol is worth rupees 18 in saudi arabia petrol is worth rupees 18 in saudi arabia in india its price is rupees 72 its price is rupees 72 okay now suppose a transportation cost you are bringing a huge shipment means transportation cost is rupees 2 if you include transportation cost also petrol should come at rupees 20 petrol should come at rupees 20 but in india petrol is selling for 72 which is a mistake in the market you notice this mistake you notice this mistake so immediately what you do you contact the sheikh in saudi arabia you meet with him shake hand smoke a hookah and then you uh, bring a containment of say uh, 1 billion liters of petrol you bring you buy 1 billion liters of petrol bring it to india and sell it at say rupees 50 market price is still 72 you are offering it at 50 one thing everybody will come to you only because market price is 72 when you are offering for 50 everybody will come to you only and you can easily make a profit of 30 rupees you can easily make a profit of 30 rupees per liter on 1 billion liter you are making a total profit of 30 billion rupees with that one transaction okay this is an example of smuggling this is an example of smuggling <laughs> it is illegal okay but again this is this gives you the idea of arbitrage this is a mistake in the market guys an asset that is worth 20 is selling for 72 is a mistake in the market and the government is always scared policy makers are always scared of increasing the taxes okay uh, now if you notice that uh, during the lockdown several governments have imposed heavy taxation on liquor okay 50 percent 100 percent 200 percent taxation on liquor that seems like a very good idea why not tax liquor at 5000 percentage okay huge revenue for the government on one side on the other side the consumption of liquor will go down the reason is if such a price difference exists there is a possibility of arbitrage when it is legal it is called arbitrage when it is illegal it's called smuggling <laughs> okay so okay another example okay these classes of swastik academy are available uh, on the certain link for rupees 3000 okay for rupees 3000 
you can you have a screen recorder on your laptop i am itself giving you ideas here i am itself giving you ideas you have screen recorder or you somehow figured out how to download download option is not available i guess i hope it's not available you figured out how to download these videos so you have downloaded all the videos 3000 and you're selling it outside for 2000 200 people that is again a mistake in the market and the exploitation of that is arbitrage please don't do that guys okay you're good kids i know you won't do that okay you're awesome kids so don't do that anyway uh, let's say in market a in delhi mango is selling for rupees 40 right outside delhi in agra mango is selling for rupees 100 you can buy mangoes from delhi for 40 and sell it in agra for 100 that is an arbitrage okay in the bombay stock exchange a share costs 40 in the national stock exchange a share costs 100 such differences don't arise but sometimes a very minute difference is possible okay some 0 0.05 some 5 paisa difference might be possible you can buy it at the cheaper place sell it at the more expensive place and you can make a profit okay so there's a mistake in the prices the prices have to be same the price of reliance industries a share of reliance industries in the bombay stock exchange and the national stock exchange has to be equal if they are not equal that is a mistake in the market you can make arbitrage profit okay that is arbitrage arbitrage is a strategy whereby you exploit a mistake in the market to make a riskless profit henceforth in futures options fra currency everywhere every subtopic we'll discuss arbitrage okay how a mistake in market is possible and how you can make an arbitrage game there are funds called arbitrage fund if you go to invest in a mutual fund if you go to invest in a mutual fund there are options called arbitrage funds if you invest in arbitrage funds they will make only riskless profit using uh, using the mistakes in market okay so arbitrage funds are risk free investments similar to equity okay again arbitrage funds once again i'll discuss when you discuss mutual fund okay so that is arbitrage arbitrage is making a risk free profit because of a mistake in the market understand that write a note also now you are required to develop an arbitrage strategy and show what your riskless profit will be three months hence assume that x limited will not pay any dividend in three months okay what happens when x limited pays dividend we will discuss in another question okay so what is the riskless profit show your arbitrage strategy whenever they are asking you arbitrary strategy understand there could be a mistake if there is no mistake in the answer if there is no mistake in the question your answer is arbitrary it's not possible if there is no mistake in the question your answer is arbitrage no pass not possible so whenever they are asking you for arbitrage your task is to check if there is a mistake in the market let us look at the price okay it is based on the concepts you know futures has a price a three month future has a price of rupees 312 a three month futures is a price of rupees 312 let us check if that is correct let us find out step one fair futures price let us check out the fair futures price fair future price equals what is the formula s into 1 plus r raised to n e power rt i'll explain guys don't worry e power rt i'll explain okay later s into 1 plus r raised to n what is the spot price market price of the asset today the share is currently selling for 300 the spot price is 300 into 1 plus what is the rate 0.8 percent per month so 1 plus 0 0.008 okay 0 it means 8 percent 8 percent is 1.08 point 0 0.8 is 0 0 0.008 understand percentage okay raise to for what period three months please don't take the rate as 0 0.8 into 3 2 2.4 percent that doesn't work you have to compound on a monthly basis you have to compound on a monthly basis raised to 3 okay raised to 3 understand we have had the discussion earlier 300 into 1.008 if you have any doubts regarding that and you still don't understand from bond valuation please call me 300 into 1.008 i think the answer is rupees 307.26 I think the answer is not my mental math is not that good. I have done this question so many times that I have by hearted the answer. Okay. 3 300 into 
1.008 raised to 3. 307.258 or 307.26. Okay, it's one of my favorite questions, so I know the answer by heart. Okay. You have found out that theoretically the price of future, the price of future should be 307.26. However, in the market, the actual price of futures is rupees 312. The actual price of the futures is rupees 312. Theoretically, you found it should be 307.26. Actually, it's 312. Isn't that a mistake? The market has committed a mistake. In the market, when you went online, you go to Money Control app and there is an option to check the future prices. You checked in that app the future price are 312. You did the computation over here. Using pen and paper, you did the computation over here and you found out the price only 307.26. Aha! You have found a mistake in the market. Okay. You found that futures is futures underpriced or overpriced the theoretical price according to you according to you the actual price is 307.26 whereas the actual price is 312 it is more expensive than its fair price futures is overpriced you find out that this one asset is overpriced. When your asset is overpriced, what do you do? When something is overpriced, what do you do? When something is cheap, when something is underpriced, you buy basic trader knowledge. Okay, this is not even CA final level knowledge. Basic trader knowledge. Any trader finds out something is overpriced. This pen, I can manufacture for 5 rupees. Market price 50 rupees. Let us manufacture and sell it. Okay, if something is underpriced, this water bottle, Okay, its actual worth is 100 rupees in the market is going for 50 rupees. Let us buy it and then we can later resell it at the higher price. Okay, so that is common business sense. If something you feel the market, okay, you go to a supermarket and you find out this pen is going for 50 rupees. Whereas for you to manufacture it will take only 2 rupees. It is massively overpriced. Manufacture and sell. Okay, it's a common business knowledge. If anything is overpriced, the strategy is to sell arbitrage strategies to sell understood what have we done what is the question question is develop an arbitrage strategy okay don't go to too much high level concept okay develop an arbitrage strategy. what do you do step one find out the price of futures okay there is some mistake in the market something is not correct okay we checked out the price of futures they have given the market price is 312 you found out theoretically it is 307 you found out the futures is overpriced so the strategies to sell understood two questions what do you sell do you sell a share or do you sell a future do you sell a three months future what do you sell a share or a future you guys understand share price is 300 share price is rupees 300 we have not decided whether share price is underpriced or overpriced we have not talked about it we are talking about the futures futures which you remember is an asset of its own is an asset future is an asset and that asset is overpriced so you have to sell futures point number one sell futures point number one sell futures point number two when do you sell futures when do you sell futures do you sell futures today or do you sell it after three months Mind you, 3 months future contract is selling for 312. So when do you sell it? Do you sell it after 3 months or do you sell it today? I am going to wait until you tell me an answer. Okay, I know when you will tell me an answer, only then I will respond. Okay, do you sell it today or 3 months? You have to shout out loudly. What is it? Understand. Did you sell? You should say it out loud. Okay. Even if your mom comes in and looks at you screaming at the laptop and thinks you are crazy, doesn't matter. Scream the answer. Be like a child in class. Always be like an LKG or first standard kid. Shout the answer. Have a childish spirit. Why I say childish spirit is because only children can learn. If you think you are an adult, you will never learn. Okay, always be a child. Even my principal used to say it. Always be a student. No matter how you older. The minute you think you are old, you are a profession, you stop learning. Okay, always be a student. Even after you qualify, be a student. Only then you will learn. Okay, 
So act like a child. When do you sell? Today or after three months? Understand, guys. Three month future contract. Three month future contract means it is a contract to buy the share after three months. Okay. The contract itself is an asset, or in other words, the word three month future is a name of the asset. And today its price is three one two. Guys, three month future is an asset. Okay. Three month future doesn't mean three month in the future. Okay, understand? Three month future doesn't mean three month in the future. Three month future is an asset. What is the nature of SNL? It's a non-deliverable exchange traded. It's a non-deliverable exchange traded contract to sell an asset after three months. Okay, you know that story. Now leave it. Three month future is an asset. It's the name of the asset. Three month future is price at three one two. Doesn't mean after three month the future is price at three one two. Three three month future is the name of the asset. Three month future is the name of the asset, and that asset today has a price of three month two. So you have to sell it today. Okay, so you can write down arbitrage strategy. Give the subheading. Give the subheading. Arbitrage strategy. Sell three months. Futures today. Sell three months futures today. Okay, and after writing that, draw this diagram. Okay, this is the most beautiful. I'm really proud of it because it is kind of derived from what SSR used to teach. But I like to call this as my diagram. Okay, so draw this diagram. Pay attention. Put your pens down and pay attention, and then you can draw. Okay. This cross will be there in every question of futures. Okay, every question of futures there will be this cross. First thing, draw a cross. Okay, the cross has two sides. The right side is called cash market. In the cash market, you are trading in real products, shares, debentures. The actual product is being traded. Left side is called. Futures market. Left side is called futures market. Okay, where futures are traded. In the right side, cash market, you are buying and selling the shares. In the left side, futures market, you are buying and selling futures. Okay, upper portion is called today, and lower portion is called three months. Lower portion is called after three months. Okay, so we have decided what is our strategy. Our arbitrary strategy is sell three months future today. So here, today in the future market, today in the future market, you are going to sell futures. Today in the future market, you are going to sell futures. Sell futures is also called selling means you are creating a liability position, guys. Okay, buying means creating an asset. Selling means creating a liability. Having a liability is called going short. We have discussed short sale before. Okay, to sell means to go short. I use the word short. Okay, so the strategy is sell futures today. Now the rule of the cross. I will discuss the cross at length after this question. Okay, what is the reason why this cross comes this way? I will discuss at length after the question. Okay, but understand the rule. Why the rule has come? I will discuss after the question. What is the rule? Every column has to fill opposite. So here you are selling. Here you are buying. Here you are buying means here you are selling. Here you are selling means here you are buying. So that's a circle. Sell, buy, sell, buy. Okay. Here you are selling means here you are buying and here you are buying and here you are selling. That's the rule. Okay. So the strategy. Once you know sell future today. Once you know the rule is to sell future today. Here buy a share. Sell means to go short, means buy means to go long. Okay, so for this question, I'll write in detail sell and buy. Next question, not so I'll just say short and long. Short means to sell, long means to buy. Okay, after three months, you will sell the share, and after three months, you will buy futures. This is the strategy. Now let's check out how 
profit is derived from the strategy okay so we have drawn the cross let us operate on the cross okay let's fill in the figures so our strategy is sell futures today what is the price of futures today three month futures today has a price of rupees 312 so enter rupees 312 okay right side buy a share shares today have a price what is the price of a share today today share has a price of rupees 300 the share has a price of rupees 300 so buy a share for 300 okay now after three months what happens after three months there are two possibilities scenario one the share price could increase from 300 go up to 350 scenario one okay so scenario one share price could increase say to rupees 350 okay i'm just going to assume 350 and let's see how it works out not 35 rupees 350 okay i'm just going to assume 35 let's see what happens okay then we'll try 250 okay two scenarios the share price will increase or decrease let's see what happens okay so after three months share price increasing to 350 okay share price become 350 you are selling the share which means you're going short sell means to go short or short means sell. okay and after three months you're buying futures you're going short sorry you're going long buy means to go long after three months what are the price of futures we learnt a very important rule we learnt a very important rule that on the due date on the due date price of futures and price of the underlying asset will be the same so on the due date price of futures will be the same if share price is 350 futures price also after them on the due date okay before the due date that will not be the case but on the due date the futures price will also be 350 okay one more item to consider mind you over here you're buying a share okay you're buying a share for 300 what happens you're paying out of your pocket you're taking 300 rupees and you're paying okay and after three months you're getting a share after three months you're selling a share and you're getting 350 rupees understand where did this 300 rupees come from option one you borrow if you borrow means you have to pay an interest correct or else you can assume it's your own money you're not borrowing it's your own money if that is the assumption then this money could have invested in a bank you could have put that money in a bank deposit okay you could have put that money in a bank deposit and you would get interest so you're losing an opportunity cost okay you're losing an opportunity cost either way if you borrow you have to pay interest if you are not if it's your own money there's an opportunity cost involved. you could have invested that money in a bank and earned interest you're losing that interest because you bought a share so either way there is an interest so pay interest How much is the interest on 300 rupees for three months? Don't do any computation. Check this out, guys. We have it over here. We got this 307.26. 307.26 is nothing but 300 plus interest. Okay. This 1 plus R raised to N represents the interest portion. So the 7.26 can be said to be the interest. Okay. You got over here 307.26, guys. Okay. That is nothing but 300 plus 7.26 which represents the interest 300 being the spot price okay we have mentioned over here also fair future price is spot price plus interest in this question it's explicitly given that dividend is zero dividend is zero so spot price plus interest spot price is 300 interest is 7.26 so you have to pay interest of rupees 7.26 so what is happening first we decided that what first we found out fair future price okay first we found out fair future price 307.26 we decided that futures is overpriced let us sell futures okay so now based on the rule the rule of the cross says if you sell futures you have to buy a share sell the share after three months and buy futures after three months that is how the cross operates today futures are priced at 312 is it 312 or 307.26? Yes, understand. 307.26 is the theoretical price. You have computed in your notebook. 
in your notebook you have written down and computed 307.26 that if you go to the shop they will not sell it to you for 307.26 the fair price is 31 uh, sorry the market price is 312 okay shares have a market price of 300 you bought a share for 300 you sold futures for 312 okay after three months assume share price becomes 350 after three months assume share price becomes 350 okay on the due date if share price is 350 the future price is also 350 okay so after three months you are buying futures for 350 and selling share for 350 okay you bought a share for 300 today after three months you can sell it for 350 but you have to pay interest either you have to pay interest or you are losing an opportunity cost of 7.26 now let us see what happens over here over here you sold the futures today now understand guys don't think of it that way entered into a contract to sell don't think of all that futures and asset futures and asset think of it that way okay futures and asset you have sold it for 312 yes you can sell today and buy tomorrow okay futures and asset you have sold it for 312 after three months you are buying it for 350 bought for 350 sold for 312 you are suffering a loss you are suffering a loss of rupees 38 you are suffering a loss of rupees 38 now in the share market you bought for 300 you paid 7.26 so total outflow is 307.26 okay you have total outflow of 307.26 you sold it for 350 you have an inflow of 350 you have inflow of 350 you have an outflow of 307.26 you make a profit inflow you are receiving 350 you have paid 300 to buy the share and paid 7.26 interest cost so you make a profit of 42.74 you have a loss of rupees 38 profit of 42.74 net profit i don't have space to write over here net profit is equal to 42.74 minus 38 is rupees 4.74 you get a net profit okay doubt why is it 350 minus 300 350 is inflow 300 is outflow okay why is 7.26 coming because of the time value difference we have discussed earlier even for that one month or three months there is a time value difference 300 and 350 cannot be simply net off there is a time value difference that difference is adjusted by taking interest of 7.26 Okay, time value difference you have adjusted. Now, over here you are selling for 312 and you are buying for 350. You are selling for 312 and buying for 350. What about the time value difference over here? Why have you not considered any interest over here? Why interest is not considered over here? Interest is not considered over here because when you sell, see at this point, you are selling futures for 312. Are you receiving 312 rupees? No. When you sell futures for 312, you are not receiving 312 rupees. It's only a contract. Okay. The cash settlement happens only over here. Only on the due date, you will have to pay 38 rupees. You sold for 312, you had to buy for 350, you are suffering a loss. This is the only cash movement. 312 is only a contract. Although you are selling it, it's only a contract. It's only a button on your phone. It's only a button on your phone. No actual cash flow. No cash inflow or outflow is happening. Over here at 350 also. 350 when you are buying futures for 350, you don't have to pay 350. This 312 and 350 will be settled off and you will have to pay only 38 rupees. Understood? So you have a net profit loss of 38, profit of 42.74, you have a net profit of 4.74 rupees. Now, maybe in scenario 1, share price increased to 350. Let us look at scenario 2. Scenario 2, where share price could decrease, what happens? Say to rupees 250. Suppose your share price decreased to rupees 250, what will happen? Scenario 2, same cross I am going to draw. Cash market, write down fully, okay? Please don't write abbreviations, I am uh, lacking in space, okay? future market so 
this is what happens if I write full okay future market so please bear with me today and after three months okay strategy is still the same okay after three months you are supposing the price could change today the price is still 312 today it is still overpriced today it is still overpriced your strategy is the same so sell okay write down fully sell a future i'm just writing short here long here short here long okay so today you are selling a future the market price of futures fair price 307 that we don't take the market price that is what is available in the market okay you cannot write in your notebook a hey, future price 307 can you give me for three they, nobody will give you okay market price 312 you are selling futures for 312 and you are buying a share for 300 after three months share price becomes 250 you sell the share future price also becomes 300 because cardinal rule on the due date future price and cash price will be the same so future price also becomes 250 you bought for 300 you have to pay 300 which you could have invested in a bank you have to pay interest there's nothing but adjusting for the time value difference of 7.26 let us see what happens you sold for 312 bought for 250 you have a profit of rupees 62 you sold for 250 in flow 250 you have to pay 307.26 you have a loss of 57.26 you have a profit of rupees 62 and loss of 57.26 net profit is it a net profit or net loss you have a profit of 62 and loss of 57.26 your net profit is rupees 4.74 in scenario 2 when the share price became 250 your profit is still 4.74 in scenario when the, when the share price increased it was again 4.74 in any scenario. now you can try to in infinite scenarios it becomes 400 500 150 for any scenario you can check it out the net profit remains 4.74 okay through the transitive properties you can say for 350 also is 4.74 for 250 also it is 4.74 for 400 also it will be 4.74 for 200 also it will be 4.74 in every scenario you are getting a risk free profit there is no risk involved because tomorrow after three months whatever the price becomes after three months whatever the price becomes you are guaranteed a profit of 4.74 now can i show you one magic i'll show you one magic look at this what is the market price of futures market price of futures 312 what is a fair future price that you have computed you have computed futures should have a fair price of 307.26 there is a mistake in the market how much is a mistake in the market the market has committed a mistake of 4.74 that 4.74 will come to you as a profit as an arbitrage profit okay if the price becomes goes up to 350 or comes down to 250 you still have a profit of 4.74 no matter what what is the strategy futures are overpriced so you sell it go short accordingly long short long fill out the prices today future price is 312 share price is 300 after three months you are assuming it is 250 both sides is 250 compute the profit compute the loss pay interest don't forget to pay interest now this is the concept please write down scenario one Draw the, draw the cross if you have not already done it draw the cross write down scenario 1 when it is 350 scenario 2 when it is 250 and write down third one exam presentation write down exam presentation okay so exam you can write scenario 1 and scenario 2 that's a little longer exam presentation better would be this one cross you can very much draw okay examiner loves diagrams 
in his answer sheet. Okay, examiner loves diagrams. Please draw the cross. No issues. Okay, it's like a table only. Just think of it as a table. Okay, it's not a religious symbol or anything. It's just a table that is designed as a cross. Okay, so write full forms. Cash market, future market, today, after three months. Okay, uh, write down full words. Okay, because I've already written down the full words over here. I'm not going to repeat it. These are the full words. Okay, sell futures, buy a share, sell the share, buy futures. Okay, so write the full words, sell futures or go short. Okay, here you go long, here again you go long, short over here means long over here. You sell today means three months later you have to buy. Okay, today you have sold futures means three months later you have to buy. Anytime before, anytime during these three months you could have bought. But only if you buy at the end of three months, your arbitrage will work. Okay, you can have bought it in any period. You can have bought you sold it today means any period within three months you could have bought it back. But only if you buy it back after three months, your arbitrage will work because only after three months the price over here and the price over here becomes the same. Okay, anytime in between the price could change. Okay, now exam presentation. Today it is 312, long 300. Okay, after three months, let the price be P. Okay, so for exam presentation. You need to assume share price 350 or 250. You can say let the price of share after three months be P. Let the price of share after three months be P. So after three months, share price is P, future price also P. You have to you have short. You have to pay interest. Of 7.26. So here you have a profit of 312 minus P, selling price minus purchase or inflow minus outflow is your profit. Okay. Here you have a profit of uh, P minus 307.26, 300 rupees payment and 7.26 interest. Both of this put together is your outflow. Okay. So your in uh, profit over here is 312 minus P and here it is P minus 307.26 net profit. Is equal to 312 minus P plus P minus 307.26 net profit is equal to rupees 4.74 okay so for exam this much presentation is enough you need not go for two scenarios you can just take p okay understood what is futures okay it's an asset think of futures as a property this is a future okay it's a tradable something that you can buy and sell what is the nature it's a contract which means when you buy futures you don't have to pay okay only on the due date when you're squaring off your position okay Today you sell, after three months you buy. So on this date you're squaring your position. On that date you have to make a net settlement. Okay, a net settlement. So if on the due date the price becomes 250, on the due date, whenever you're squaring, instead of three months, after two months if you square off your position, on that date, whenever you're squaring off your position, you have to make a net settlement. Either you will receive a profit or you have to pay a loss okay so futures is a contract what kind of contract it is a non-deliverable so only net settlement happens you won't receive any asset okay you're not going to receive any share or anything okay only a net settlement of this profit happens it's an exchange rate which means it's flexible at any point of time you can buy or sell three months means after one month you can go long after two months also you can go long why haven't you done that then? Because only on the day, due date if you go long, your arbitrary strategy works. For arbitrage to work, this and this has to be the same. Understood now? Okay. What is the price of a futures? Fair future price equals S into 1 plus R raised to N. Spot price plus interest minus dividend. Okay. So, if you have done this, let me give you one more question. Bonus question for you. Please write down in your notebook. In the above question, if futures were 
selling at rupees 305 okay instead of 312 what if futures are selling at 305 what would be your arbitrage strategy take i think it should take more than five minutes take five minutes pause and you're back okay so what would the arbitrary strategy be if in the above question futures were selling at 305 instead of 312 it is 305 so in this case futures are underpriced okay the fair future price nothing changes okay fair future price is still 307.26 fair future price still 307.26 something that is worth 307.26 but it is being traded at 305 it is underpriced when it is underpriced what do you do therefore buy therefore buy therefore your strategy is to buy buy what buy three month futures when do you buy it today you will buy a three month futures today let's check that out let's check out the strategy cash market please write the full word cash market futures market today and after three months so in the second question when share price becomes sorry futures price becomes 305 our strategy is to buy so today you go long so you can write uh, buy futures today at rupees 305 since you are long over here you go short over here or rather you're going to sell a share today what is the share price 300 after three months <coughs> long and short let the price after three months be p so in the futures market today you buy at 305 and after three months you sell at p what is your profit p why is it p minus 305 305 minus p generally profit take it as inflow minus outflow only then you will get net profit okay over here you are selling at 300 you sold a share at rupees 300 which means you will receive rupees 300 okay you have a liability of creating a liability i know you know that negative investment liability all are the same negativeness and borrowing liability all are the same so you sold a share for rupees 300 you sold a share for rupees 300 you are receiving 300 what do you do with this 300 rupees you will invest in a bank okay you sold a share you receive 300 that 300 will be invested in a bank you and when you invest in a bank you will receive interest in the previous question we paid interest now we are receiving interest amount remains the same 7.26 okay <clears throat> so you will receive 300 you will also receive 7.26 you have to pay p your profit is inflow minus outflow 307.26 minus p net profit <clears throat> is equal to p minus 305 plus 307.26 minus p now minus p and plus p gets cancelled 307.26 minus 305 is rupees 2.26 no matter what p becomes whatever is p whatever value you assign for p p and p gets cancelled you get a net profit of 2.26 that is arbitrage strategy that is arbitrage strategy understood okay so go to your formula page now i think we have written down what is futures it's an asset it's a non-deliverable exchange traded contract to buy another asset called the underlying asset and third point fair future prices s into 1 plus r raised to n you can also mention <coughs> that ffp is equal to s into e power rt what is e power rt i'll explain shortly okay next heading you can write what are the uses of futures now we are talking what are the uses of futures what are the uses of futures use number one 
you can use it for arbitrage. Oh, if it is so easy to make money, then everybody in India will become billionaires, no? See guys, uh, in theory, although this is easy, you can make this 2.26, you can make this profit and understand, this is per future, okay? You can go along on 100 billion futures. Accordingly, you will make a, such a huge profit. You can sell, you can reinvest. This can happen for any amount of money you want. But mind you, when we do it within our facility, with this Dabba laptop, when you do it, future price fluctuate every second. Future price fluctuate every second. So you need that kind of technology and manpower and knowledge. And you need a very low interest rate. Your risk rate has to be low. Okay, you and I common people will have a high risk rate. Financial institutions like mutual funds will have the technology, the knowledge and also the low cost of capital. Okay, they will be able to execute these strategies. People like you and I, difficult, possible, but difficult to execute these arbitrage strategies. Okay, however, that's one of the use. You can use it for arbitrage. Use number two. You can use it for hedging. What is hedging? I think I have discussed this before. Hedging basically means risk reduction. Hedging basically means risk reduction. Hedging basically means risk reduction. Okay, so futures can be used to reduce your risk. Let us check that out. Okay, so use of futures. First point write down arbitrage. Refer page number so and so of your notebook for arbitrage. Okay, no more notes under arbitrage. Second use is hedging. Okay, for hedging, check this out, pay very close attention, pay very close how futures works for hedging, what is the real purpose of futures and mind you, there are a lot of people, rather I even spoke to this, a uh, lot of people who use futures for gambling, okay, understand, futures is not for gambling, okay, I'll come to gambling a little later, but the primary use of futures, the reason why a product such as futures was launched was for hedging, okay, so consider my daughter's wedding. Okay, my daughter is going to get married after three months. My daughter is going to get married after three months. So, this is the future market, cash market today after three months. Okay, so this is the situation. After three months, I want to buy gold. After three months, I want to buy gold. This is the situation. Okay. But I am worried about price of gold. Okay. Currently, the price is rupees 30,000 per sovereign. Okay. In Malayalam, it's called, Malayalam and Tamil, it's called Pavan. In English, it's called sovereign. 8 grams is one sovereign. Okay. And currently, the price is rupees 30,000 per sovereign. Okay. I don't mind if it goes up to 32,000 also. Up to rupees 32,000 also, I don't mind. Okay, but if it goes beyond 32,000, then I will be in trouble. Okay, then the dowry issue will come, the groom will say no, he cannot marry, all those drama you have seen it in uh, TA a bunch of times. Okay, so on the due date, if the price becomes 32,000, if the price becomes 32,000, then I am safe. Okay, if it is any more than 32,000, I am in trouble. Okay. So, I am going to sleep and I am tensed. Oh my God, oh my God. On the due date, after three months, what is going to be the price of gold? What is going to be the price of gold? Will my daughter get married? You remember all the drama that happens in movies with the slow background music and the flashy lights and all that. Okay. So, the drama is going on. You don't know what the price of gold will be on this date. You don't know the price of gold. Okay. So, you decide to seek the advice of a expert derivatives and he tells you, Sir, you are ready to pay up to 30,000? Yes, sir. I am ready to pay. Up to 30,000, I am ready to pay. Now, it is only 30,000. I think after 3 months it will be 30,000, I am ready to pay. Sir, you do one thing. If you can pay 30,000, I will give you good news. Futures, one sovereign is for 32,000. Okay, future price, currently, the price of a 3 months future is 32,000. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? Sir, you do one thing. You buy futures today. You buy futures today at rupees 32,000. Okay, then what? Then you just wait and relax, sir. No tension, sir. No tension. You just wait and relax. Pakka, pakka, sir. No tension. You just wait and relax. Pakka, don't worry. I am guaranteeing you. Okay. So now the father of the bride is sleeping. 
after three months he wakes up after three months he wakes up he opens the newspaper and <coughs> heart attack he almost gets because price of gold is 36,000 per sovereign he comes to this useless advisor and shouts at him forefathers sons everybody he calls good good words and this is you useless fellow because of you price of gold is 30,000 now my daughter will not get married all that drama will happen <coughs> Oh, you have ruined my life. My reputation is gone. All that drama. Okay. So, the con uh, investment advisor consults. Sir, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. We have taken security measures. What security measures? Sir, you remember we bought futures. Yes, we bought futures. Sir, now the future price has also become 36,000 because of the due date. Because it is a due date, the future price has also become 36,000. Okay. So, so, now we can sell it. Three months back we bought. Now we can sell it. Okay. What if we sell it? We will get a profit of 4,000. Okay, you have 30,000 with you. Now add this 4,000, you will be able to up for 36,000. Or in other words, you have to sell 36,000, but from futures, you got a profit of 4,000. So your net outflow is only being 30,000. You wanted to pay 32,000, you got to pay only 32,000. Understood? Look at the other example, look at the other scenario. What if price of gold becomes 28,000? price of gold became 28,000. So now the bride's father is very excited. Yes, lottery, jackpot. Don't worry. You will have to sell futures at 28,000 and incur 4,000 rupee loss. So you'll have to incur a loss of rupees 4,000 and you will have to pay for 28,000. So 28,000 plus 4,000, you are still paying 32,000. Your price is effectively locked at 32,000. Whatever differential was there, that will come to you as a loss or gain over here. Okay. Or you can write down this example very quickly or in more crude terms, more crude terms, very simple terms. Hedging. Okay. Under hedging, scenario one. You want to buy after three months. You want to buy after three months. Okay. So draw the cross in cash market. My diagram will be a little horrible. Okay. Please bear with me. In the cash market, this is a position. You are long over here. After three months, you want to buy. Okay. Guys, understand. If you want to buy after three months, what is your tension? What is your concern? After three months, you want to buy. Are you happy? Are you relaxed? No. You are tensed. What is your tension? Your tension is that the price will increase. You are tensed that the price will increase. Okay. So to reduce that tension, what are you going to do? In the future market, in the future market, you will create a scenario. So the increase in price is favorable to you. What will you do? Today you will buy and after three months you will go short, you will sell. So that if there is any increase in price, that increase in price will come to you as a profit. Although over here, you will have to pay a more expensive. Here you will have to pay a more expensive price. Here you will get a profit. This expense and this profit will knock each other off and you will be safe. Understood? So if you want to buy after, understand, if you want to buy after three months, you are concerned. You are concerned about an increase in price. You are concerned about an increase in price. So what do you do? You create a situation in the futures market whereby increase in price is favorable to you. If you buy today for 100 rupees and tomorrow the price increase to 120 rupees, you are getting a 20 rupee profit or not. So this situation is favorable to you. And understand the beauty to go long in the futures market, to buy futures market. Do you have to spend any money? No, it's only a contract. It's only a contract to buy futures. You don't have to pay anything. It's only a contract. Okay, so it's a free hedging. Okay, today you can sell, today you can buy, tomorrow you can sell, you will get a profit. If your price increase, this profit will knock it off against, you will be hedged. Your position will be hedged as was the case over here. As was the case over here. Understand again, our old rule is satisfied. Here you are long. Okay, our original question was buy after three months, which means three months later in the cash market, 
you have a buy position therefore here you have a sell position here you have a buy position okay in hedging not every column futures market both columns have to be filled okay futures market both columns have to be filled cash market not necessary that you have to fill both columns this column can be left blank doesn't matter okay so our rule is satisfied here long short and long if you know any one position you can fill up the other three okay scenario number two you want to sell something sell asset in three months you want to sell something which means in the cash market you are selling a real asset okay so in the cash market after three months not today after three months you want to sell your position is short okay which means if it's short over here it's long over here and the short over here understand you are selling something after three months what is your concern what is your tension you are worried that the price will crash i am a trader of water bottles okay i am tensed that my water bottles price will fall okay that is my tension my water bottle become cheaper after three months so what do i do i create a position whereby a fall in price is favorable to me you sell something today and buy it after three months you sell something for 100 and buy it after three months for 80 if the price crashes you sold for 100 bought for 80 you have a profit of 20 rupees the fall in price is favorable to you okay so a fall in price favorable to you or in other words if you want to sell an asset after three months short long short if you want to sell an asset after three months in the cash market today sell futures after three months square that off by buying futures position number three currently holding an asset so now you know the hang of it i am currently in position of gold i am currently in position of shares of tata motors what is your concern will the price fall so this is my position guys in the cash market today i am long in the cash market today i am long what i am worried i am worried about a fall in price i am worried about a fall in price so you create a situation whereby a fall in price is favorable to you which means you sell today and buy after three months in the futures market or in other words long short and long it works that way okay understood everywhere this cross will save if you know the first position if you know the first position the other positions will come to you okay when we are doing arbitrage where is that when we are doing arbitrage we knew this position this is our first position we decide that shares were overpriced therefore we sold it shares are overpriced therefore we sold it this was our first position accordingly we found out long short and long okay here in arbitrage all four quadrants have to be filled hedging not necessary this one can be left empty this one can be left empty okay long short and long another explanation so much to learn guys it's so beautiful check this out this is the first position you are long today which is after three months you will be short understand guys i had promised i'd explain this you are long today and after three months you're short in the cash market you're taking the reverse position you're short today and after three months you're long on the same asset here the same asset here it's the futures of that asset what you are doing is you are creating a position whereby correlation is minus one whatever profit comes to you over here same thing will come as a loss over here if here the price increases your profit will go up here it will go down correlation between futures and cash market is basically minus one you are keeping your leg in two boats one which goes this way the other which goes this way and you're connecting it so basically you are hedged okay so you are virtually creating a position whereby correlation is minus one understood futures bar so what are the uses of futures first use of futures okay now the thing i understand guys i understand your pain i tell the end you forget what happened in the beginning don't worry as we do more promise you'll get that clarity with futures okay so what are the use of futures point number one arbitrage we have discussed that 
Point number two, hedging. Please draw these diagrams. Three scenarios. Any scenario you should be able to apply. Okay, any scenario. You know the first position. You know here you have to buy, which means here you have to sell, here you have to buy. You know what to do. Okay, so generally in question, three positions come. One, you want to buy after three months. Two, you want to sell after three months or six months or one year, whatever. Or three, you are currently holding an asset. These are the three situations you have and you are concerned. In this case, you are concerned about a fall in price. What do you do? You sell, you buy. If the price falls, here you will get a profit. And this profit will set off any loss you have over here. If you have a loss in the cash market, in the cash market, if you suffer any loss, you can compensate that with a profit in the futures market. Vice versa. See, understand very important rule of hedging. The point of hedging is not to make profit. Profit is not our objective. The objective is that risk should be eliminated. Which means, see, if you have a loss over here, you will get a profit over here. Vice versa. If you have a profit over here, you will have a loss over here. Okay. But doesn't matter. You are not entering the futures to make profit. The loss and profit will set each other off and your risk will fall. That is the object of hedging. That is why you use futures. Okay. And understand it is free. There is no cash flow involved in futures. Okay. Now, there are the dangers of futures. Okay, you can write under use also. Use number three. Futures can be use number three. Okay, first use is arbitrary, second was hedging, third is used for predicting prices. Now, in the business line newspaper, there is one page, I think the third from last, there is one page called the commodities page, okay, whereby they discuss the price of various commodities like pepper, tea, gold, bullion, silver, all these commodities, iron, copper, they discuss the prices and generally the first line will be futures are high, therefore the price expected to increase. See what happens. An asset worth 100, a risk free rate is 10%, risk free rate is 10%, okay, period is 1 year, time period is 1 year, so its futures will be 110, okay, I assume compound annually, future price will be 110, after 1 year, you are pakka pakka sure that the share price will increase to 500, future price will also be 500, okay, you are pakka pakka sure that the share price will increase to 500, so what can you do? You will buy shares. Okay, now I'm not talking about hedging. Okay, I'm talking about normal trading. You're a trader. Okay, what can you do? You can buy shares. You're pakka pakka sure that the share will become 500 after one year. Okay, so you can buy shares at 100. You can sell at 500. You can make a 400 rupee profit. But there is a problem. Understand? Beauty of futures. There is a problem. What is the problem? The problem is that how many shares can you buy? You have to look inside your pocket. You need to dig inside your pocket and you will find out you have 1000 rupees in your pocket. In your pocket you have 1000 rupees. Which is how many shares can you buy? You can buy only 10 shares. You are very sad. <laughs> you are sad. Why are you sad? Because you can buy only 10 shares. 400 profits, 400 into 10, only 4000 rupees profit you can make. You wish, oh, what if I was Ambani? I have this knowledge. I have this amazing knowledge. That share price will become 100 from, from 100 will become 500. I know because I have done my research. I have reviewed the annual statements, last 10 years annual statements I have reviewed. I have interviewed the CEO personally. I know the board of directors. I know the market conditions. I know that share price will increase to 500. Very profitable time. Okay, for example, pandemic is going on. You are talking about a pharma company. Okay, pharmaceutical company that is very close to finding a cure for COVID. Prices will definitely increase. Everybody will want shares of this, uh, shares of this company. Okay, so now you are very sad because you can buy only 10 shares. Oh, if at all I was Mukesh Ambani, I would buy a billion shares. Okay, fret not, worry not. You have a solution. You don't have money. Huh? Don't buy shares. Buy futures. Buy futures instead. Okay, what is the benefit of buying futures? It's only a contract. You don't have to pay anything today. Okay, you can buy futures at 100. How many futures you can buy? It's only a contract. It's only a button. I will buy 1 billion futures. I will buy 
1 billion futures. After 1 year, its price will become 500. You have a gain of 390 rupees into 1 billion, 390 billion. Within 1 year, you can become a billionaire. Yes! Within 1 year, you can become a billionaire. And what is the investment you have made? Zero. Did you pay 110? No, you just click the button. You have only entered into a contract. You have only entered into a contract. Therefore, that by itself is not a cash outflow. You have with zero investment, zero investment, you have made a profit of 390 billion rupees or dollars or whatever currency you want. Put it. You can become a billionaire overnight. That is what futures does. Now, when there is a possibility that you can billionaires overnight, what happens? Everybody will start buying futures. Everybody will start buying futures. Okay, you buy mistake told your friends, dude, I'm telling you secret advice. The share price will go up. buy futures. You are in for lottery. That friend will tell 10 other friends, 10 other friends, 1000 other people. Finally, will come in the newspaper. Everybody will buy futures. Okay, when the demand of this futures increase again understand it's an exchange traded item when the demand increases the price will increase although the fair price is 110 its price will be pushed up okay its price may go up to 450 rupees because people are buying people are sure that it will become 500 after one year its price will be pushed up to 450 okay and not just see again shares are restricted by the authorized capital how many shares of Reliance Industries can you buy? What is the paid up share capital? That also not possible. Some is with the promoter that you cannot buy. What is the free float market capitalization? Only that much you can buy. Understand for a share, how much is the share capital? You have 1000 shares in the market. Then even if you have a billion dollars with you, you can buy only 1000 shares. Okay. But with futures, understand there is no restriction of authorized share capital. Okay. A company has only 1000 shares. But there are 100 million people, 10 crore people willing to sell. And there are 100 million, 10 crore people willing to buy. The company has only 1000 shares. Okay. But there are 100 million sellers and 100 million buyers ready. The exchange will connect these two and you will have 100 million futures in the market. Okay. That is how futures work. So futures not even restricted by this authorized share capital as long as sellers and buyers are ready as long as you have sellers ready to sell 100 million futures and as long as you have buyers ready to buy 100 million futures suppose you have 500 million people ready to sell but only 100 million ready to buy then your net open position is 100 million suppose you have 1 billion people ready to buy but only 500 million ready to sell your net open position is still 500 million okay so accordingly there will be a lot of demand because there is no investment involved. There will be a lot of demand for this futures. Understand? There will be a lot of demand for this futures somewhere along the line. Okay. The factory where research was going on or the medicine, there was a pharma company where medicine was being exploded. Okay. Or the CEO died. Tragedy. The CEO himself got COVID and died. Look at the irony. Okay. The CEO died or the factory exploded. Okay, so suddenly your prediction goes wrong. Suddenly your prediction goes wrong. The price of the share was increasing. Slowly it was between 100, 110, 120, 200. It was increasing. It reached up to 221 rupees. Suddenly the factory exploded. All the research paper was destroyed. Your prediction goes wrong now. Instead of 500, you are expecting the share price to be now 50. What is happening? The futures because of demand were still going at 450. The prediction became 50. Suddenly the demand will collapse. From 450, it will collapse to 50. How many futures? Not just 1000 futures or anything. How many sellers were ready? How many buyers were ready? That many futures on that many futures, that much price will be lost. I remember the words of my uh, teacher Raman sir. Invest in share market, it is risky. You will suffer losses. Things like this will happen. Nobody expected the pandemic. Okay. Suddenly it came, lockdown was implemented, all corporates went down. Okay, MSMEs went down, economy went down. Nobody expects this to happen. Share market is risky. You will suffer losses. Okay. But still, at least there will be a validation. At least you will learn. Go and touch it. Futures is fire. Futures is blazing hot fire. 
See, because understand, you have invested in 1 billion futures. Did you pay any money? No. Now, all of a sudden, when this loss happens, the stock market will come to your house. How much is the loss? 400 rupees. On how many futures? On 1 billion futures. 400 billion. Give me now. Now, give me 400 billion rupees. The stock market will demand you. Okay. Your kidney, lungs, liver, everything, pancreas, everything you donate still won't come to 4 billion uh, dollars or 4 billion rupees. Okay. So, futures can be extremely risky. Okay. However, understand an increase in demand of futures. When futures are 450, it kind of indicates what direction the share price is going to go. Okay. An increase in if futures are at 450, it means the share price after one year is going to be around 450 or 500. So, use number three was it can be used for predicting the price. Okay. Futures can be used for predicting the future prices. Having said that, note, futures are extremely risky and if people, ignorant people who think futures are just like poker, it's like a casino and they come and they go buy 1 billion futures or sell 1 billion futures. See, so understand, you have suffered a loss of 400 billion, your loss is somebody else's gain. Because see, for every buyer, for every buyer, there is a corresponding seller. So, when the buyer makes a 1 billion dollars loss, seller is making a 1 billion dollar profit. Okay. Now, what happens? Such loss occurred. You lost 1 billion dollars. Do you have 1 billion dollars? No, you don't have. If you don't have 1 billion dollars, how will the seller get his profit? If you don't pay your loss, how will the seller get his profit? Okay. So, then eventually the stock exchange will have to pay. BSC will have to go and pay the seller. Okay. So, now to prevent, because practically, although the intention of futures is to reduce risk, practically futures itself can become extremely risky. The reason is most people or a lot of people who go into the futures market think there is an element of gambling that is coming down more and more awareness is spreading. All the students who see this now know that futures is not gambling, it is proper hedging. It's a very important tool. So now you know that futures is reasonable. But anyway, stock market is still worried that more and more people might think this is gambling and may incur huge losses and it will create a headache for the stock exchange. So stock exchange has certain rules. Rules to protect. Rules to protect trader. Stock market has certain rules to protect the trader. Okay. Rule number one. You can only buy in lots or they are also called contracts of 50 to 100 to 500 depend on the price of the futures it depends on the price of each futures you will have a contract lot size that could be 100 or 500 or 50 or whatever so the point is you cannot just go and try experiment with one future or two futures okay if you're buying or selling you have to commit to at least 100 or 200 you can buy it and sell it only in multiples of 150 or 1000. Okay, so initially, if you're going to buy, you can buy only 2000 futures. That is to avoid small and non commitment, non committal players, casual players to stay out of it. Okay, if you are in there, you have to buy at least one contract which is 1000 futures. Okay, you can buy it only in lots, which is also called contracts. Point number one. Point number two you have to make an initial deposit. Initial deposit you have to make an initial deposit which is a certain percentage of your net open position okay you are 1 lakh rupees long and rupees 2 lakh short or rupees 2.5 lakh short so you can see your net open position 1 lakh long 2.5 short your net open position is rupees 1.5 lakh a certain percentage of that would have to be deposited with the stock market and with the stock exchange as an initial margin. Okay, point number two. So you cannot simply go 1 billion futures. If you're going buying 1 billion futures, a certain percentage of that value will have to be deposited. Mind you, that's not an expense, okay? That's only a deposit. 
when you're squaring off your position when you're saying okay buy sell trade over when the trade is over he'll return to you along with profit okay if you made any profit he'll return you the initial deposit along with the profit so rule number two you have to make an initial margin or an initial deposit okay rule number three very important rule of daily netting very important rule of daily netting so what have we discussed so far pay attention guys today you have bought futures say rupees 1 lakh say rupees 1 lakh you have bought futures okay did you pay anything you you not pay anything you only made a deposit of an initial margin you only made a deposit of an initial you not paid anything you only made a deposit of initial margin okay after 3 months you are selling it okay maybe after 3 months the price of futures becomes 1.5 lakh if it becomes 1.5 lakh you will receive a 50000 profit on the last day you will get a 50000 profit now after 3 months you are squaring off your position you are selling and the price of futures becomes 0.2 lakh okay so you bought futures at 1 lakh you are selling futures at 0.2 lakh on the due date you have a loss of 0.8 lakh okay initial margin was only 0.3 lakh okay so you still have to pay additional 0.5 lakh what will the stock exchange do the stock exchange will have to come knocking at your door sir please you have made a loss please pay us sir please pay us because your loss is somebody else's profit you have sold you have bought today and sold after 3 months which means somebody else has sold today and bought after 3 months and made a profit of 0.8 lakh okay we have to pay him sir you won't pay us then only we can pay him what to do sir okay so then stock exchange has to go running around this trader who has made a loss stock exchange is not going to take that risk what the stock exchange will do is he will not wait till the end of 3 months or till you sell okay after 2 months also you can sell after 2 months also you can sell he is not going to wait for that daily basis okay today you bought tomorrow he will check what is the stock price what is the value of futures tomorrow he will check what is the value of futures tomorrow value of futures becomes 1.1 lakh tomorrow the value of futures becomes 1.1 lakh you have made a 10000 rupees profit he will immediately give you keep 10000 rupees are you but i have not sold it no worries daily profit will give you okay if you don't we'll add it to your initial deposit you have made an initial margin over here you made an initial deposit over here on top of that initial deposit we'll keep adding don't worry sir daily base will compute profit next day it became 1.2 lakh again 0.1 again 10000 rupees will be added to your initial margin next day it became 0.9 30000 will be taken you have made a loss of 30000 30000 will be taken out of your initial margin okay daily basis the initial margin will be adjusted you start with the initial margin of 30000 you added 0.1 you added again 0.1 then you lost 0.3 you are back to 0.2 the minute you cross this particular point called the maintenance margin we'll discuss one problem regarding initial margin and maintenance margin okay the minute you cross a point below maintenance margin they will call you sir if you want to continue trading tomorrow please replenish your initial margin bring 10000 rupees and replenish your initial margin back to the original level no i cannot you cannot uh, take your initial margin get out your trading is cancelled okay so understand stock exchange although when we discuss when we do the problem we compute profit and loss only on the due date arbitrage also we have done that way here also we'll do it only this way okay profit or loss will be computed only on the due date however practically on a daily basis you are computing the profit or a loss and you are netting it okay any profit added to the initial margin any loss take it away from the initial margin you are successively incurring losses your initial margin falls down falls down falls down when it reaches a particular level called maintenance margin stock exchange will call you sir trader sir maintenance margin ho gaya bring your margin back to initial margin level he has to pay only if he brings it back to the initial margin level he will be able to continue trading 
okay so these are the three measures taken by stock exchange to protect the traders one only big amounts okay you have to buy or sell only in lots or contracts lots or contracts cannot be in decimal okay that kind of defeats the purpose okay you cannot buy 2.1 lots cheta cheta give me 0.1 lot doesn't work okay one two three four only in whole numbers you can buy lots point number one point number two you will have to deposit something called an initial margin you are selling futures or buying futures whatever your net open positions a certain percentage will have to be deposited as initial margin and point number three daily netting on a daily basis profit or loss is computed on a daily basis profit or loss is computed and that is added to or reduced from your initial margin okay quickly let's review what we've done so far what is futures futures an asset think of the spend futures an asset what is the nature of asset it's an asset that you can buy and sell okay it's an asset that you can buy and sell okay what is the nature of asset it's a contract what kind of contract it's a non deliverable exchange traded contract upon an underlying asset okay what is the fair future price s into 1 plus r raised to n you found out fair future price when the price when the market price is not equal to fair future price you will have arbitrage when the market price not equal to fair future price you will have arbitrage what is the use of futures arbitrage is one use second use is hedging hedging we had a long discussion what is hedging in different scenarios when you want to buy an asset after 3 months you are concerned about an increase in price you are concerned about an increase in price when you want to buy an asset after 3 months you are concerned about an increase in price so to protect that you will buy today and sell after 3 months in the future market if the price actually increases you will get a profit over here which can compensate any increase in price over here okay similarly if you want to sell an asset after 3 months or if you are currently holding an asset whatever the situation you can use futures to hedge your position reduce the risk understand futures not a profit making tool you are not going to futures to make profit you are going to futures primarily either for arbitrage if there is a mistake you can do arbitrage or primarily fundamentally to protect your position this is your position in the cash market you want to buy something after 3 months your daughter's wedding or your bharat petroleum you have a big consignment of crude oil coming in after 3 months after 3 months you have to make a payment of so many crores of rupees for a consignment of crude oil that came from saudi arabia you are concerned will the forex rate go up will the price of crude oil go up you are concerned okay to cut that concern you can act upon oil futures to relax you to cool you down to kill your stress you can do some activity in futures market you are worried about rupees going up you are worried about dollar falling down you are worried about price of oil fluctuating don't worry futures will save you okay however if you don't have a genuine business need and if you are going only for profit yes futures can give you massive profit futures can give you massive profit futures can also give you massive loss some rule of financial management where there is great with great return comes great risk okay if you are expecting huge returns be ready for huge risk futures offers tremendous return correspondingly there is tremendous risk also okay and to hedge that risk or rather to protect the investors to protect the trader sebi stock exchanges have certain rules one you can trade only in lots or contracts two you have to make an initial deposit three profit or loss will be computed on a daily basis this is called daily netting okay so with that the theoretical portion the concepts of futures is done the concepts of futures is done okay let us take out you want a break now okay so far i have not given you break although i know you have taken like 500 breaks in between but if you are not taking any break very sincere i am really proud of you uh, let us do question number 2 but you can take a short break before that okay so back guys so let us check out question number 2 okay question number 2 explains the other half of futures okay so question number 1 and 2 futures will be complete Okay, and then it's just application of the same concept again and again. 
a mutual fund is holding the following assets in crores investment in diversified you have many equity shares you have invested in a diversified portfolio of equity shares 90 crores cash and bank balance is 10 crores so total investment is 100 crores cash and bank is risk free investment right? there is no uh, risk involved in cash okay the beta of the portfolio is 1.1 the index future is selling at 4300 level okay bsc futures or nifty futures okay a future based on market is selling at 4300 level for every asset there is a futures for market also you have market futures okay how there is return on market how there is risk of market you also have futures for market the fund manager apprehends that he expects that the index will fall market will fall by 10 percent that's his apprehension how many index futures he should short for perfect hedging one index future consists of 50 units okay so one contract or one lot consists of 50 units how many contracts or how many lots should he short substantiate your answer assuming fund managers apprehensions will materialize okay so i've read the question let me, let me focus on the word required what is the word required here how many how many index futures should he short for perfect trading first of all in the future market are you going short or are you going long let us try that out very quickly so you have futures you have, what is your current position you are long you are holding a portfolio of how much 90 or 100 is it 90 or 100 90 or 100 90 crore 10 crore is cash is risk free asset don't try to hedge that okay cash and bank balance is already risk free you don't have to hedge the cash and bank balance okay so how many for perfect hedging you are long 90 crores in the cash market the question is what should be how much you should you go short how much should you go short or long over here what is the strategy it's short okay so clearly here it is long therefore here it is short plain and simple what is the amount what is the amount that's the question okay or rather the number of futures let's see I am long on 90 crores. I am worried about 90 crores. I am worried whether the value of my 90 crores will go down. Okay. So if it goes down, I should make a profit. So I am going short. My first instinct is I will go short on 90 crores. Okay. I am long on 90. I will go short on 90 crores in the future market. Point number one. Point number two. Which share are you long on? Okay. Suppose you are long on the shares of TCS. You could go short on TCS futures. Suppose you are long on Maruti. You could go long on Maruti futures. If you are long on Infosys, Infosys futures. Tata Motors, Tata Motors futures. Okay, futures is the corresponding company. But here, you are long on a diversified market, diversified portfolio. There are many equity shares. And not necessarily that all shares have a corresponding futures. Okay, not all shares have a corresponding futures. Only the shares that are mid cap or large cap that have huge market capitalization or mid level market capitalization generally have futures. Small companies need not have corresponding futures. Okay, Swastik Academy is not a company, but even if we become a company, we may not have immediately, we may not immediately get a Swastik Academy futures. Okay, there has to be a sufficient demand for it. Now, since you are long on a portfolio of diversified equity shares and not all of them have corresponding futures, you went and shorted market futures. Market basically represents the entire portfolio. That's your assumption. Okay, so you have gone short on what futures? Market futures. Okay, it's a contract where you can sell market after a certain period. Okay, understood. Okay, so I'm going on 90 crores. Now, I'm answering part two first, okay? Assuming the fund manager's apprehensions materialize. What is fund manager's apprehension? The fund manager apprehends that the index will fall at most. What is index? Index is market. I told you sensitive index is Sensex, which is the market. Okay. So index falls by 10%. So what happens? Your market is expected to fall by 10%. So after what? Are they giving any time period? No. So after a certain period in the future or in the later period, when you go short, your mark, sorry, when you go long, your market will fall by 10%, 90 crore will become 81 crore. 
So you're short on 90 crore, long on 81 crore, you will have a profit of 9 crore. Now pay attention. When the market falls by 9 crore, when the market falls by 10 percentage, your portfolio will fall by 11 percentage. 11 percent of 90 is 9.9 .9 crores. After whatever period, you will fall by 9.9, .9, you will become 80.1 crore. You have a loss of 9.9 .9 crore. From where did I get this 11 percent? From where did I get this 11 percent? Think, think, think. It's right over here. Beta of the portfolio is 1 point. What? What is beta? What is beta? You know the formula for beta. What is the meaning of beta? It's sensitivity. How much you are sensitive to the market or in other words, change in security return by change in market return or change in security by change in market. Now, when the market falls by 10%, beta is 1.1. Your security into 1.1 will fall by 11%. That's what beta means. If market falls by 1%, security will fall, fall by 1.1%. If market falls by 10%, your stock will fall by 11%. Okay. So now here you have a profit of 9 crores, loss of 9.9 .9 crores, net loss is 0 0.9 crores. Your hedging is not perfect. Your hedging is not perfect because you have a net loss. Perfect hedging. You want a perfect hedging over here. You want perfect hedging. Perfect hedging means that your profit and loss will strike each other off and there will be no loss. There is no risk involved. Okay. So if your hedging has to be perfect, here you have a loss of 9.9 .9 crores, your profit also should be 9.9 .9 crores. However, market will fall only by 10%, whereas your stock will fall by 11%. When your stock falls by 11%, your market will move only by 10%. So 10% of what amount? will be equal to 9.9 .9 crores. You will have to go short on not 90 crore, but on 99 crore. Understand what is the amount of futures I have to go short on. You are long on 90 crores. You are long on a diversified portfolio of 90 crores that you have to hedge. To hedge that, you have to go short on what? On Nifty. For what amount? I first said, okay, let me go for 90 crores. Let me go for 90 crores. When I go for 9, when I am short on 90 crores, my hedging is not perfect. There is a net loss of 0.9. Okay. Why is that? To correct that, my loss is 9.9 .9 crores over here. Profit has to be also correspondingly 9.9. .9. Loss of 9.9, .9, profit of 9.9. .9. Only then the hedging can be said to be perfect. If your profit has to be 9.9, .9, the amount to be short has to be 99 crores. Your profit has to be 99 crores understood so step one what is 99 crores 99 is something like 90 into 1.1 or in other words very simple terms step one amount to be short is equal to amount to be hedged amount to be hedged into beta okay why into beta because there is this impact 10 percent effect over here will create 11 percent effect over here that 1.1 impact there to correct that you will have to be short not on 90 crores but on 99 crores only then your profit will be 9.9 .9. profit and loss will set off each other and you will have a perfect hedging okay so you'll have to be short on 99 what is 99 90 into 1.1 step one the amount to be short equals amount to be hedged into beta okay which is 90 crore into 1.1 that is 99 crore step one step two number of futures step one amount to be short step two number of futures number of futures equals amount to be short divided by price of futures guys pay attention price of futures today 
very often it happens in the exam in questions that they'll give two price of futures today price of futures is so and so after three months price of futures will increase to so and so okay what is the price of futures today today is when you're hedging okay what is the price of futures today amount to be short we discovered in step one is 99 crores price of futures today look at the question index futures is currently selling at 4300 level so price of futures that is the price of futures by the way 4300 level represents the price of futures 99 crore divided by 4300 i need excel to solve that 99 divided by 99 crores divided by 4300 you will get 230232 don't take the decimal you will get 230233 units now we also know that one future contract consists of 50 units so step 3 step 3 number of future contracts number of future contracts to be short short or long short only we discussed that over here okay because you are long in the cash market you are short in the futures market okay so number of future contracts to be short equals number of units equals number of units divided by number of units per contract number of units per contract 2 lakh pay attention guys 2 lakh 30233 2 lakh 30233 divided by number of units per contract is in the question how much is given 50 So two lakh thirty thousand two thirty three divided by fifty is four six zero. Please don't give the answer as four six zero four point six five one. Guys, understand? Guys, understand? We are going in terms of contracts because to avoid this decimal. Okay, the stock exchange doesn't want you to trade in contracts. The stock exchange doesn't want you to trade in contracts. Or in decimals. That's why we are going for contracts. Okay. Then again, don't say point one, point six, point five. Don't do all the drama. Okay. Four six zero point four point six five becomes four six zero five future contracts. So how many contracts are you going short? Step one. Amount to be first. Find out the amount to be short. Amount to be short is amount to be hedged into beta ninety nine. We found out it is ninety nine. step to number of future units is amount to be short divided by price of futures today price of futures today is 2 lakh 30233 number of future contracts is number of units divided by number of units per contract 2 lakh 30233 divided by 50 4605 contracts this is your answer to part 1 how many index Futures should you short for perfect hedging? You need to short four six zero five four thousand six not five future contracts to obtain perfect hedging. Substantiate your answer, assuming the fund manager's apprehensions will materialize. For that, you have to draw this part. Okay, if you short four six zero five futures, you will have a short value of ninety nine crores. 99 stand per cent is 9.9. You will have a profit of 9.9 crores and loss of 9.9 crores. Your hedging becomes perfect. You can just draw this diagram to for that last part of the answer. Understood? Now, please come to your formula page. Step one, two, and three. I'm combining into one steps. Okay. So write down this formula in the formula page. Number of future contracts. in every question of futures you will have two steps step 1 will be the cross step 2 will be number of future contracts okay number of future contracts is equal to amount to be hedged 
into beta divided by price of futures today please write in all caps it's an important word price of futures today into number of units per contract so i've combined the three steps step 1 amount to be short amount to be short because you are long in the cash market if you are short in the cash market amount to be long okay amount to be short or long is amount to be hedged into beta divide by price of futures today you will get the number of future units divide by number of units per contract you will get the number of future contracts done okay 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 so if that is done we are completed two important concepts concept number 1 the cross guys remember how hedging happens if you are holding something today you are currently holding you are currently long means future market today short after 3 months long okay that is a strategy strategy is very important point number 1 point number 2 is regarding number how many contracts should you short we decide the strategy point number 2 how many contracts should you go short or long on amount to be edged into beta by price of futures today into number of units per contract okay question number 2 is done question number 3 uh, has come repeatedly in the rtp i am holding that for now okay because there are some issues in question number 3 we'll hold it for the moment okay we'll hold it for now. we'll do it in the end if possible okay question number 4 simple question the three months forward price forward and future are different forward is over the counter future is exchange traded okay don't go into too much anyway the price is the same future price competition of future price and competition of forward price are the same the 6 month forward price of a security is 208.18 the borrowing rate is 18% per annum with monthly rest with monthly rest means monthly compounding what should the spot price be please take 5 minutes of your time very quickly find out what is the spot price they are giving you the future price or rather the forward price find out the spot price pause very quickly do it tap 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 done done back okay chalo so you know ffp is equal to spot price into 1 plus r raised to n that's equal to 208.18 okay spot price into 1 plus okay 8% per annum what is the period over here the period is um 6 months the period is 6 months so 8% into 6 by 12 you'll get 1 plus 0.04 this would have been correct this would have been correct if not for the word monthly rest interest is being compounded on a monthly basis every month the interest is being compounded so in that case you have to consider what is the per month rate into 1 by 12 sorry into 1 by 12 8 divided by 12 i think it is 0.667 0.667 okay so you will get the rate is 0.667 per month 0.67 per month spot price into 1 plus 0.00667 raised to 6 raised to 6 guys understand the importance of the word monthly rest compounding happens on a monthly basis if this word was not there if the word monthly rest just per annum okay borrowing rate is 8% per annum payable worth monthly rest is not there this word is deleted if that was deleted you could very well take 8% into 4 by sorry 8% into 6 by 12 and take 4% over here assume it is annual rest but because of the word monthly rest you have to take the per month rate and raise it to the 6 power we have discussed that in 
bond valuation mlp okay that per month monthly rest all is important okay this is equal to 208.18 or spot price is equal to 208.18 divided by 1.00667 raised to 6 let's take that out very quickly on excel 208.18 divided by 1.00667 raised to 6 you will get 200 point 04 you will get 200.04 or depending on your calculator you might get exactly rupees 200 that is your spot price okay next up please mark it as a day before exam question question number five please mark it as a day before exam question very very important question number five basically covers the entire chapter okay every concept related to futures will be tested in question number five if you are thorough in question number five then we can say futures is done okay shall we do question number five ready Chalo. question number five bsc is at five thousand bsc is at five thousand okay what is bsc bombay stock exchange market okay bsc represents the market is at five thousand value of portfolio is 10 lakh ten thousand rupees risk free interest rate 9 percent dividend yield on index is 6 percent okay so so far in the questions we have done we haven't considered the dividend yield okay r is just risk free now you have to consider the dividend yield also beta of portfolio 1.5 we assume that a future contract on the bs index with four months maturity is used to hedge the value of portfolio over the next three months okay are hedging over the next three months check this out guys hedge the value of portfolio over the next three months one future contract is for delivery 50 times the index one contract consists of 50 units based on the above information calculate one price of future contract two the gain on short futures position if index turns out to be 4500 in three months okay would you like to try an adventure okay try it out 10 minutes please take 10 minutes of your time and please try out first part one and then part two okay please try it out and you have something written in the notebook no matter how wrong no matter how right doesn't matter have something written in the notebook and within 10 minutes you can resume and we'll discuss the answer okay ready Shala. you're back okay i'm done shall we discuss all right question number five part one what is the price of future contract price of future price of future contract is equal to what futures are we talking about guys mind you we assume that future contract on the BSC index with four months maturity. You are talking about a BSC futures. Okay, you are talking about a BSC futures. BSC, you know, is now for 5000. So, spot price S is 5000. Price of futures is 5000. Rate is risk free rate is 9 percentage and dividend yield is 6 percentage. So, 9 minus 6 is 3 percentage okay 3 percentage guys mind you 3 percentage per annum 3 percentage per annum what is the period what is the period bs index over the next with the next four months maturity is used to hedge the value of portfolio for three months so bsc index the futures guys understand the future contract on bsc has a four month maturity but you are using it to hedge over the next three months. You need to hedge it only for three months. It has maturity of four months. So tell me, period is three months or four months? You use it for whatever period you want. You use it for one month, two months, ten days, five days. Use it for whatever period you want. That will not affect the price of futures. The price of futures is affected by the remaining period of maturity. It has remaining four months to maturity. Yes, mind you, it has 
four months remaining to maturity that influences the price okay so rate is three percent per month three percent per annum so four months into four by twelve you will get one percentage okay guys mind you taken directly into four by twelve why didn't we do one by twelve raised to four because nowhere is it said compounding monthly okay it's not saying compounding monthly so we take three into directly four by twelve okay raised to one point zero zero something to four is not required because they are not saying it is compounded monthly in the previous question there was this word monthly rest okay so now let's check it out the spot price is five thousand price of formula is s into one plus r raised to n spot price is five thousand into one point zero one raise to one one period of four months okay we are not raising to any period we have directly taken over here so we adjust for that four months okay so 5000 into 1.01 you can ignore this 5000 into 1.01 i think that's equal to 5050 that is price of one unit one contract consists of 50 units delivery is for 50 times okay you get 50 units in one contract so price of future price of future unit you can call it price of future unit price of future is 5050 price of contract you can write both answers okay price of future contract is equal to 5050 into 50 units what is 5050 into 50 252500 let's check it out 255500 rupees 252500 is the price of one contract that consists of 50 units okay that is it with part one price of future contract i hope you are able to do it on your own if not don't worry derivatives we learn very slowly very slowly we learn okay now <coughs> part two the gain on short futures position if index turns out to be 4503 months the gain in short futures position see you have a portfolio you are invested in a portfolio of 10 lakh 10,000 you are invested in a portfolio of 10 lakh 10,000 let's check it out <coughs> you are invested or in other words you are long on a portfolio rupees 10 lakh 10.10 lakh okay so since you're long in the cash market obviously you will be short in the futures market you are short you have sold futures okay you have sold futures when do you sell futures you sold futures today you sold futures today when the price is 5050 after this pay attention now pay attention pay attention after three months the index after three months the index what is the index bsc turns out to be 4500 after three months the index turns out to be 4500 okay after three months mind you if index is 4500 what is the price of futures after three months so part one part two step one we can shuffle this there are three four steps you can do it in any order by the way you will understand okay step one <coughs> price of futures after three months price of futures after three months fair future price equals s into <coughs> 1 plus r raised to n after three months the spot price is 4500 after three months the spot price 4500 into one point what is the rate three percent per annum what is the remaining period now guys mind you you are looking at after three months see the original life was four months the original life was four months maturity three months got over now what is the remaining life remaining life is only one month okay so the remaining life is only one month so three percent per annum into one by twelve 
3 percent per annum in 1 by 12 I think the rate is 0 0.75 let us check it out <coughs> 3 divided by 12 is 0 0.25 sorry not 0 0.75 0 0.25 I should not have used a calculator for it quite silly of me Ho jata hai. It's 0 0.25 percentage why have we taken for one month because the remaining life is now the period is now one month 4001.0025 fair future price equals four five one one point two five rupees four thousand five hundred and eleven point two five okay price of one unit of futures so you can say step two price of future contract price of future contract after 3 months is equal to 4511 into 50 units how much is that 4511 into 50 units is 2,25,562 2,25,562.5 now pay attention guys see what is happening today your position in the futures market is short today your position in the futures market is short why because you are long you are holding a portfolio you are long so in the futures market you are short how many on <coughs> one future contract had a value of 2,52,500 one future contract had a value of 2,52,500 after 3 months, your hedging is over. You do not want to hedge for entire 4 months. You want to hedge only for 3 months. So, after 3 months, you are going long on 2 lakh. What is the value? 2 lakh. Sorry guys. 2 lakh 25,562.5. 2 lakh 25,562.5. How did we get that? How did we get that? Fair future price was 4,511. How did you get that 4,511? Pay attention guys. 4,500 was the index value. After 3 months, see guys, after 3 months, you have not reached expiry. The futures have an expiry of 4 months. After 4 months, the index value and the future price will be the same. After 4 months, the index value and the future price will be the same. But after 3 months, you still have 1 month remaining to maturity. So, future price and index price will not be the same. Just like over here, index was for 5000. Index was 5000. My pen sometimes rebels. Okay, index was for 5000. Future on that index is 5050. After 3 months, index is 4500. Future on that index is 4,511. After 4 months, suppose index is 4,000. Future on that index will also be 4,000. Because after 4 months, you have reached expiry. You have reached the due date. So, that will tally. But after 3 months, you still have 1 month remaining to maturity. 0.25% per month. You have fair future price of 4,511 per unit. 2,25,562 per contract. So, today you are short on 2,50,500. After 3 months, you are long on 2,25,562. Do you have a gain or loss? You sold for 2,52, you are buying for 2,25. You sold for 2,52,500. You bought for 2 lakh selling for its minus purchase price. 2,52 minus 2,25. You have a gain of 26,937. gain on futures is equal to rupees 26,937.5. Look at part 1 guys. Part 1 they are asking price of future contract. Today by default it is today. Okay. So, we found out BSE was 5000, 
5000 into 1 plus r raised to n for a period of 4 months we found out that the price was 5050 now part 2 they are asking us the gain on short futures position okay after 3 months index turns out to be 4500 which means index futures becomes 4500 into 1 plus r raised to n where the remaining period is 1 month diagrammatically yes today index is for 5000 futures is 5050 because you have remaining 4 months to maturity now after 3 months after 3 months index becomes 4500 index futures still has remaining 1 month to maturity therefore index futures is worth 4511 ok that is for 1 unit 1 contract consists of 50 units so you will have 2 lakh 52,500 and here 2,25,562.5 something like that guys what was the price 2,25,562.5 that's right okay the gain on futures contract is rupees 26,937 mind you per contract per contract Okay, now how many contracts are you entering into? Step 3. Step 3. Number of contracts. To hedge that 10 lakh 10,000, how many contracts? This number of contracts could have been step 1 also. You could have done it at the beginning. I want to clear out the rest of the part. And then we are doing number of contracts. Number of contracts equals amount to be hedged. What is the formula? amount to be hedged into beta divided by price of futures today price today what is today when you enter into hedge okay three months back was today into number of units per contract number of units apply amount to be hedged is rupees come on mm, 10 lakh 10,000 into beta is 1.5 divided by price of futures today is 5050 into number of units per contract is 50 okay you will get work it out let's try it out 10 lakh 10 thousand into 1.5 divided by 5050 price of futures today when you entered into the contract when you started hedging it was 5050 into 50 you get 6 contracts you need 6 contracts you need 6 contracts you need a total of 6 contracts now gain is 26937 per contract so finally you can say total gain is equal to 26,937 per contract into number of contracts is 6 you will get a total gain of 1,61,625 that is it ok so it is a big question with a lot of work ok what did they ask part one simple price of future contract simple plain and straightforward what did you do price of future contract is over here 50 50 into 50 you get 252500 okay now part two we had some work okay what is the gain in short futures position so today three months back it was 50 50 three months later it is 4511 okay or if you look at the contracts it is 500. So the gain in futures position was 226,937. This is per contract. How many contracts did you enter into? You entered into 6 contracts. You entered into 6 contracts. Total gain is 1,61,625 rupees. Total gain is rupees 1,61,625. That is it very 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 important question you are thorough in this question means you are thorough in futures
okay so pay very close attention to this question very important question revise it thoroughly make no mistake okay leave no gap in this question done okay next question question number 6 now uh, the next three questions are uh, quite simple questions small questions and i'm not going to do either any of the three questions i'm not going to do it there are just some adjustments in question number 6 7 and 8 which i'm going to discuss okay and with that we will wrap up call today okay so there are just some points i want to uh, show you where there is some discussion involved calculate the price of a 3 months pqr futures if pqr face value 10 quotes 220 on the nse so the price of pqr on the national stock exchange okay in the market is 220 the market price 220 and 3 month future price at 230 and the 1 month borrowing rate is given as 15 percent and the expected annual dividend and the expected annual dividend is 25 percent per annum payable before expiry payable before expiry also examine the arbitrage opportunity also examine the arbitrage opportunity so first is calculate the price of 3 months pqr futures it's quoted at 230 but you have to calculate the price also examine arbitrage opportunity okay so it is exactly same as question number one okay i'm not going to do the whole thing again for you i'm just going to have a short discussion on this point expected annual dividend is 25 percent okay so guys pay attention fair futures price is equal to spot price into 1 plus r raised to n okay spot price is 220 spot price 220 spot price equals 220 into 1 plus r raised to n 1 plus what is the rate rate is 15 percent pay attention guys one month borrowing rate pay attention the one month borrowing rate is 15 percent one month borrowing rate is 15 percent is it per annum or per month this is per annum or per month guys see 15 percent per month means into 12 per annum you will have 180 percentage per annum 180 percentage per annum which is a super extraordinary huge rate of interest okay if such is the rate of interest the economy will be destroyed it will blow up okay such a rate is not possible ca students should have that practical sense that 15 percent per annum itself is exorbitant okay risk free these rates have to be risk free in nature so risk free rate of 15 percent per annum itself is exorbitant currently in the current market scenario risk rate is around five or six percent that is a risk free rate so risk free rate of 15 percent itself is exorbitant risk free rate of 180 percent is supernatural it will never happen okay it will never happen so 15 percent is not per month 15 percent is per annum only where is it mentioned need not mention ca final students should have that sense ca final should have that sense that 15 percent is per annum then what do you mean by this one month they are saying one month borrowing rate see one month borrowing rate is 15 percent per annum we learn this in fra we learn this in fra that as your period increases the rate will also increase which means for one month if you want a one month loan it is 15 percent per annum if you want a two month loan it will be 16 percent per annum both per annum only but as the period increase understand from the lender's point of view the risk is increasing i am giving you loan for one day very little risk for one week risk is higher if i give you loan for one month risk is much higher for two months for one year so as the period increases the risk to the lender will increase accordingly the rate of interest will also increase per annum only but the rate of interest will increase so here it says for a one month borrowing for a one month borrowing it is 15 percent per annum one month borrowing is 15 percent per annum also the one month indicates monthly compounding one month indicates monthly compounding okay so you'll get 15 percent per annum 15 divided by 12 is i think 1.25 percent per month you'll get 1 220 into 1.0125 raised to 3 okay for three months that's it now what we have not 
included over here is the adjustment for dividend is the adjustment for dividend okay pay very close attention what have they given expected annual dividend of 25 percent per annum okay two choices choice number one dividend is 25 percent dividend is 25 percent choice number two dividend yield is 25 percent choice number one dividend is 25 percent choice number two dividend yield is 25 percent okay if they are simply saying dividend we have discussed in portfolios if there is simply saying dividend dividend rate is 25 percent it means 25 percent of face value rupees 10 if they are simply saying dividend it is a percentage of face value which is there is dividend of rupees 2.5 rupees 2.5 okay so what have we said fair future price um, we have discussed somewhere guys come on we have had too much discussion so we have to go all the way back i guess uh, fair future price equals spot price plus interest minus dividend spot price plus interest minus dividend now and we have also said that the r over here that the rate that we take over here is risk free rate minus risk free rate minus dividend yield risk free rate minus dividend yield i first said spot price plus interest minus dividend then i have also said that the r over here is risk rate minus dividend yield pay attention in this case if the dividend is given as an amount if they are saying it's 2.5 rupees then you can simply reduce it then you can simply reduce it minus 2.5 that is it if dividend is in the form of an amount 2.5 here it is a rate but it's a dividend rate which means a particular person is a face value you cannot treat it as a rate it is a particular person is a face value you cannot treat it as your return it is a particular person is a face value it's not a person you have 220 rupees it's not a percentage on your market price it's a person you have a face value so you have to separately reduce it as an amount minus 2.5 rupees now if it was dividend yield of 25 percent if it was dividend yield of 25 percent your rate would be 15 percent 15 percent rate of interest minus 25 in that case if it's a dividend yield a dividend yield is a percentage on your market price we had that discussion a dividend yield is a particular percentage on the market price so you are applying this rate this r is also this r is also applied on market price dividend yield is also applied on market price so dividend yield will be adjusted within this r itself you can take it as 15 minus 25 minus is absolutely okay minus 10 percent is okay minus 10 percent is okay okay so mind you in question number five sorry in question number six the adjustment is if the word is only dividend which it is over here if the word is only dividend is 25 percent if the word is simply dividend is 25 percent 25 percent of face value that is 2 rupee 50 paise you just have to separately remove it you just have to separately remove it from this amount okay spot price plus interest minus dividend if it's dividend yield that is 25 percent of market price reduce it from the rate 15 minus 25 percent you will get minus 10 percent which is okay minus rate is also okay instead of 1 plus r you will have 1 minus 10 percent 10 percent so 10 divided by 12 will be so much how much is 10 divided by 12 0.83 so if it is dividend yield you will have that's equal to 220 into 1 minus 0.00833 1 minus 0.992 into 0 0.992 it's negative okay not 1 plus 1 minus raised to 3 
okay 220 into 0.992 raised to 3 will be your fair future price if it was dividend yield if it was dividend just subtract it. point number one point number two okay so far so good so far so good this is enough okay now point number two your future has three month maturity your future has three month maturity when is dividend paid dividend is paid what are they saying in the question dividend is payable before expiry so i am assuming it is just before expiry over here then okay okay if dividend is paid at any other point this is a shortcut okay? this is a shortcut by the way okay even for this case if it is just before expiry or if it's at the end of three months this is okay how is it okay you can just reduce 2.5 Okay, this is applicable if the dividend is payable just before expiry. Okay, that is a shortcut. Now, the real logic is if dividend is paid at any other point at one month or at two months or at any other point in between, the treatment is fair future price is equal to spot price minus present value of dividend. Present value of dividend. Okay, from the spot price, remove the dividend. Okay, by adjusting. See, you have to remove dividend. You have to remove dividend. Okay, you have to adjust for time value also. Okay, so spot price is today. At some point, see, after one month, you are getting dividend. Discount that dividend for one month. Okay, spot price minus present value of dividend. Present value for how much period? When is dividend paid? When is dividend received? Okay, discount. If dividend was received after two months, discount it for two months. Okay, spot price minus present value of dividend into 1 plus R raised to N. If dividend was received after 3 months, guys pay attention, you have to discount it for 3 months and over here into 1 plus R, you are again compounding it for 3 months. So, those two effects get cancelled, you need not, you can take ignore, uh, dividend outside as you have done over here. Okay, over here dividend is payable after 3 months which means After 3 months, today you have spot price. After 3 months, you have dividend. You need not discount it for one 3 months. And then over here, see over here, over here, you are again compounding it for 3 months. You will discount it for 3 months and again compounding it for 3 months. These two actions will cancel each other out. You can just separately take this dividend outside over here. Discounting and compounding will cancel each other out. Okay, so that's a shortcut. If you didn't understand the shortcut, we will go for the long cut. Whenever dividend is paid, after one month, after one and a half months, after two months, after three months, whatever is the case, this is the long cut, this always applies. Okay, spot price minus present value of dividend. Present value means how much? If it is payment after one month, discount it for one month. Okay, discount it for that much period, bring it both to this point, spot price minus dividend. Bring it both to period zero. And then this amount into 1 plus R is 20. See, when you divide 1 divided by 1 plus R raised to N is taking the present value. When you multiply 1 plus R per N, you are taking the future value. That is futures. Okay. So, that is the adjustment for dividend if it is an amount. If it is an amount, spot price minus present value of dividend. So, you have brought both spot and dividend to 0. Then that net amount multiplied for 3 months. Okay. For CA final, I have not seen this question much. For CMA final study metal, you have this adjustment. Okay, spot price minus present value of dividend. Okay, because spot price, spot price in period 0, dividend comes in year 2. You cannot adjust those two. Okay, you have to bring dividend. You have to bring the dividend that is in period 2 to period 0. Okay, spot price minus present value of dividend and then both of them together compound it for 3 months. Understood? This applies if the dividend is an amount as given over here. If it's a rate, just reduce it from your rate. If it's a dividend yield, just reduce it from here. Understood? That is question number 6. I am not going to solve the answer. Arbitrage, do it yourself. You know how to do it yourself. Okay, you know how to do it yourself. Please do it yourself. Question number 6 is done. Question number 7. Shall we check it out? Shall we? Okay. Sensex futures are traded at a multiple of 50. 
Consider the following quotations of Sensex futures in the next 10, uh, next 10 trading days during February 2009. So you have opening on 4th February, it has a closing, ignore high and low, the closing is 3296. On 5th February, it is 3294. On 6th February, it is 3230 and so on is given. Now, Abhishek bought one Sensex future on February 4th at a price that is shown over here 3296. At a price shown over here 3296. Now, the average daily absolute change, the average daily absolute change in the contract is 10,000 and standard deviation of these changes is 2,000. The maintenance margin is 75% of initial margin. You are required to determine the daily balance in the initial margin account and payment on margin calls if any. Okay. So, please note down initial margin. Please note down guys. You can put in your formula piece also. Initial margin is equal to mu plus 3 sigma. Where mu, what is mu? Mu is the average daily absolute change in value of contract. Mu is the average daily absolute change in the value of contract. It will be given in the question. 10,000 plus 3 times standard deviation. Standard deviation is given. The standard deviation of these changes is 2,000. 3 into 2,000 is rupee is 16,000. 16,000 is the initial margin and maintenance margin is 75 percentage of 16,000 that is 12,000. Okay, so you have to deposit 16,000 and when your level reaches 12,000, you have to replace it. Let us check it out. So, what has Abhishek done? Abhishek bought one Sensex future. One Sensex future consists of 50 units on 4th February. Let us look at the answer. So, date 4 to 2020. So, date is 4 to 2020. Uh, price of Sensex. is given as 3296. So, total comes to 3296.5 into 50, 1,64,000. Initial margin or rather margin money, 16,000, we just computed. Margin money, 16,000, we have just computed. Okay, this is what happens in 4.2. Now on 5.2, Sensex is at 3294.4. Okay, so total comes to 1,64,720. Okay, now loss or gain, loss or I will try gain or loss will be in bracket, gain or loss. Okay. I have lost 105 rupees, which is a margin money will be 16,000 minus 105, 16,895. Now, on 6.2, Sensex becomes 3230.4. Total value becomes 1,61,520, which means you are incurring a loss of 3,200. Margin money gets reduced to 12,695. I have always done this in the whiteboard where it's a great strain, you know, typing everything in calculator. I'm thoroughly enjoying it doing it in Excel. Okay, it's fun now because I just have to keep the figures, the formula will split out everything. Okay, but you have to do it in calculator because guys understand Excel is fun, but only when you do it in calculator, you will really understand, you will really feel the numbers. Okay, very important that you do it in uh, calculator in pen. Okay, so on 7th February, Sensex again crashes to 3212. Your future value, you have one future unit which consists of 50 units that becomes 1,60,000. 
you again have a loss of 905 and your margin money comes below 11,690. Okay, comes below 11, comes to 11,790, which is below your maintenance margin. Guys, this is the concept of daily netting. Okay, what is asked in the question? You are required to determine the daily balance in margin account and payment on margin calls. If any. So, you started off with the margin money of 16,000. In day one, you incurred loss of 105 rupees when your price fell from 3296.5 to 3294.4. Your total became 1,64,720. You incurred a loss of 105 rupees. Your margin money fell that much. Okay. The minute it falls below 12,000, you have to bring it back to 16,000. By how? Invest. Okay, deposit. Deposit margin money. Rupees 5,000 rather 4,210. How do you get 4,210? That is nothing but 16,000 minus, sorry, minus 11,790, 4,210, you have to deposit margin money. You can give the column heading action. Okay. So, this is a table that shows the daily margin money balances and any additional margin money brought in, if any. Okay. Uh, payment on margin calls. Okay. So, margin call, you can also call margin calls. Okay. This table will go on till how much? 18th of February. Okay. So, I am not going to do this. I just gave you an idea. Just note it down. This is the idea. That is it. Question number 8. Question number 8. Okay. On 31st August, the value of stock index was 2,200. Risk free rate of return has been 8%. Okay. Uh, the dividend yield on the stock is given as under dividend yield for each month per annum. So, for January it is 3% per annum, February 4%, so on and so forth. For 12 months it is given. Assume interest is, assume interest is continuously compounded daily. If it is continuously compounded daily, you have to use E raised to RT. Which, sadly, we are not going to discuss today, we will discuss in the next class. Okay, E power RT, we will discuss in the next class. CA final students, if E power RT, E power RT value is given. E 0 0.01583 is 1.01593. Just take that value. Okay. Spot price into 1.01593. Guys, nowhere have I asked you to do something without explaining. Okay. Just bear with me. In the next class, we will have a detailed discussion on what is E power R3, how uh, E power RT, how is it taken, all those things. We will have a detailed discussion. Okay. Uh, what is the rate of interest? See, you are purchasing the futures on 31.8 August end and it is deliverable. Okay, this is not a non-deliverable, apparently this is a deliverable futures. Okay, there are deliverable futures also, I told you, SEBI has amended its rules. Uh, there are deliverable futures also now, it is deliver deliverable on December. So, the rates are for September it is 3%, October 3%, November 4%, December 3%. Do you add that or do you take the average? These are all percentages per annum. So, take the average of these four rates, you will get the average per annum rate into 4 by 12. Okay, that should be the rate. Okay. Uh, anyway, you have directly E power RT, so the rate is not relevant. Okay, E power RT, wait in the next class, we will have a detailed discussion. Okay, so that is it for now. In the next class, we are going to have a grand beginning of options. Okay, so with that, we will wind up for the rate. Bye bye.